Dude, that was a little close. Uh, that was a little close for comfort there, bud. You guys just diving in like that. That was a little close for comfort. Harvey Spice, thank you for the tier one. I appreciate you supporting the stream, my dude. Incredible Hank. Thank you for the 23 months. Enjoy the bacon. Enjoy the emotes. Enjoy the ad-free experience. Hope you guys had a good, um, I don't know, like 18 hours from the last time I was live. Marcy, of course. Congrats. Well, congrats. Hope you had fun. <laughs> Don't do nothing with you. Or, uh, uh. Am I invading your personal space? Uh, yes. You have a problem with that. That's my question. Sir, do we have a problem? Old Mad Jack, thank you for the 46 months. That is a long freaking time, dude. Thank you for supporting the stream for that long. Arslan Je Jester. Thank you for the eight months. Greetings from the small little red dot in Southeast Asia. I need sleep. Dude, congrats on staying up that long. Let me know how the day has been. You know? We've got that day to look forward to. I don't know if it's been good. I'm shy. Okay. Sorry. I didn't mean to do that. It ain't so sweet. Mouse cursor conspiracy. I don't even know what that means. Did you guys get to watch some of the Europa Conference League yesterday? I actually didn't. Kind of mad about it because the matches looked fantastic. You had extra time all over the place. You got a team from Azerbaijan making the last 16 of the Europa League, which is freaking sick, by the way. Love that. What's my opinion of Tommy in it? I've sat in the same room as him once. His vibe was cool, if a little chaotic. Um, he was also at the Mr. Beast Burger opening that I ended up by some chemical accident at. And, um, yeah, he seemed like a nice guy. That dude's really famous. I did not really know who he was. That guy is really famous, though. Tommy in it. That guy couldn't move without somebody being like, Tommy! I was like, wow, I feel like I should know who you are. Uh, what subscription do I have to watch? The What subscriptions do I have to have to watch those? The one to my OnlyFans. Um, yeah, then you can watch all Europa League and Conference League matches if you're subscribed to my OnlyFans. If the Sidemen ever asked you to manage in their charity match, would you take it? Yeah. Uh, of course I would take it. That would be fun. I know one of them actually does know who I am. I the, the Ethan one knows who I am. That guy plays football manager. And he posted a video like from him. He, I don't know. He was like recovering from surgery or something. I'm not caught up on the side men lore. But this was a very interesting day for me on Twitter. Because Ethan posted a video of like him like recovering from whatever would happen whatever happened he was at home he couldn't leave that's all i remember and he had a video on his tv <clears throat> like in his room or wherever he was you know in the living room he had a video on the tv in the background and it was my video and i was like oh <laughs> hi city thank you for the nine months dude i appreciate the prime the Ethan one. I am embarrassed, really, considering how much of my audience does know who the Sidemen are, how late I figured out even who they were. Like, I did not know. I think it's probably two years ago now that I, like, figured out who the Sidemen were, learned all of that lore. Cinex, thank you for the 33 months. I didn't know that before then. I, I I didn't know. I just, I, I, I just weird as it sounds, I didn't watch a lot of YouTube growing up, and I also grew up in the U.S., also grew up in the U.S. Um, so I, I, I didn't know. I, I found out who the Sidemen were because Ollie Dixon started playing football manager like on YouTube. Now that is, nice guy, that's Chris MD's cousin who he uses as like a goalkeeper in his videos sometimes. And I then asked the question, who's Chris MD? 
And when I looked up Chris MD, it said he's often affiliated with the Sidemen. And I was like, who are the Sidemen? So I un I pulled the thread and like all of UK YouTube came out of that thread. The stream's lagging. It's on Twitch's end because I'm not dropping a single frame. So I would just hit a quick refresh if the stream is lagging. But that's what happened. Uh, yeah, I, 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 it was Ollie Dixon was playing football manager. I ended up doing a video with him. Um, but the, yeah, I was like, he's Chris MD's cousin. I'm like, who's that? And people are like, oh, Chris MD usually does stuff with the sidemen. I'm like, we're the sidemen. <laughs> and then we found all of it out. Will I still be commentating on the tournament tomorrow? How do you know about that? Yeah. Did I say that? I don't know if I was supposed to say that or not. I'm, assu I'm assuming. Yeah. Now, if, you got, if the stream's having issues, for once, it's actually not on my end, which means it's on Twitch's end. So just shake Twitch a little bit, and uh, it should be fine. But yeah, I am, I, am a, I, am a, I am commentating the tournament tomorrow. I have a friend's birthday tonight, which means I will not only be at the EAFC tournament tomorrow that E Rob and Nim are hosting, I will also be hungover, which will make me even saltier which will probably make it even more entertaining. So I will be clinically, chronically hungover while doing that tomorrow. I should react to Harry's diss track of KSI. I feel like that must have happened six years ago when diss, like, diss tracks were happening on YouTube. That might, it must have... Oh, it'll be uh, E Rob and uh, if you if you don't know, these are two streamers, right? E Rob and Nim, uh, Nim, who I've 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 done stuff before. I've done stuff with E Rob as well. Um, I commentate their FIFA tournaments. I don't I don't know how I got into doing that, but oh uh, yeah, Jake, dude, I have an entire uh, playlist called FM for Beginners. I check that out. Bow show. Yeah, so it's uh, E-Rob has me around. Anytime he does a FIFA tournament, uh, he has me commentate his FIFA tournament in an English accent. Uh, so his entire audience thinks I'm English. I've had people approach me thinking I'm English, and then I answer like, yeah, brother, what's up? And they're like, Pfft. Oh, I'm getting a phone call. Let's freaking go. I live for this. Hello? Hi, Esteban. Hello? Uh, hi. Yeah, hi, good morning. My name is Sam. I am calling about a property in 2904 West Ivy Street. Oh, uh, I, I don't, um, I don't own that. Oh, I have the wrong number. My apologies. No, it's, 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 it's okay. Somebody said the wrong, you know, uh, if I may ask one question, uh, it's not like Are bad. Sure? Uh, where did you find that number so that I can please take uh -huh. my number off of it? Yes, but it's a very it's a very popular piece of land, uh, apparently. Um, but no, I, I appreciate you. I appreciate you letting me know. Thank you. All right, thank you all for your time. Have a great weekend. All right, you too. Bye bye. I'm gonna be honest, dude. If they're nice and respectful, I'm gonna be nice and respectful. That lady was really nice. The lady was really nice. Uh, I got my. Uh, uh, Sounded like friggin' Davy Jones and Pirates in the Caribbean there. Um, yeah, I, but the reason I muted it is because I didn't want her to be like, oh, it's on this website, and then everybody would be able to find my number. But all she said was, yeah, our company buys these lists. And I was like, but where do you buy them from? And she didn't know. So it's like all these real estate companies that buy these, like you know, they get like leads, you know? They buy like these leads. Wait, is Twitch just sucking right now? That's terrible. Yeah, wife material. Nice. Dude, I'm going to call her back right now. Let me get your at.
Is it Salesforce? I don't know. She said she'll remove me from her company's database, but unless there's 375 companies, then they don't do that when they say they're going to do that. Let's see if I can watch my own stream right now, dude. We're going to enter the Zealand verse. You ready? It looks fine. Iron Brew? Oh, I freaking love Iron Brew, dude. Yeah, it looks fine, dude. I don't, uh, I don't know what you need. To be, to be fair, there are 370. Yeah. I don't have to tell you guys. I think it's a skill issue. I think it's a skill issue. <laughs> I think you guys have a viewing skill issue. Yeah, I, I, apparently I've just got like a frog in my throat today. I don't know. I'm just going to be clearing my throat really aggressively every 20 minutes. I love Iron Brew, though. There was a European food section. There was. There was a European food section when I lived in Charlottesville uh, in the Harris Teeter, and they had Iron Brew in it, and it was amazing. How's bad boy doing? Oh, he's out on loan in Belgium, and he's at AFCON. All right, I don't think I don't, he's not at AFCON, but he has made appearances for South Africa's national team. So I get a sponsorship deal with Incogni and you can be taken off the list for free. Dude, I have. Uh, Incogni sponsored the stream before. Yo, wait. See, Macker Thistle picked up their first point on Wednesday? Dude, that's the team that lost 51 to nothing. That's so sick, man. That's the team that lost 51 to nothing. They picked up their first point. I like met and interviewed the manager and everything. That's amazing. I'm so happy for them. They picked up their first point. Nice. Let's see what you guys have for us today in the what's happening section. We have uh, Bayern and Tuchel into their working relationship in the summer. But to me, the funniest part about that is that they were monitoring Solskjaer as a potential interim manager, which means they basically were sitting there like, do we fire Tuchel now or do we fire Tuchel later? Now, I would have loved if Solskjaer had shown up and like actually done well at Bayern and proved all the Manchester United fans wrong that thought that he wasn't equipped well enough to be able to handle this. I would have loved that so much. What was Bayern's statement on the whole Tuchel thing? In a good, I don't know, ugh, I don't know if it was a good discussion. In a good open discussion, we came to the decision to end our working relationship by mutual agreement in the summer. Our goal is to pursue a new footballing direction with a new head coach for next season. Until then, every individual at the club is expressly called upon to achieve the maximum possible in the Champions League and Bundesliga. You know why I find this so weird? What happens if, for example, what's up, Castro? How you doing? Who lost 51 nothing? St. Mac or Thistle? There it is. They got the draw. The draw 3-3. Three, three. St. Ma Why am I not following St. Mac or Thistle? I should be. Proud of those boys. I'm proud of them boys. Hell yeah. What do I think will take over? They're going to go for Shabby Alonzo, dude, for sure. But what I think is funny about this is even though it's not likely, if you leave it to the end of the season... Bayern absolutely could still win the Champions League and the Bundesliga. What happens if they do?
Like, if they do, do they just go, ah, too cool, never mind, come on back. Like, like, like okay, if they, if they, if they win... You know, they're not eliminated. This is the this is the equivalent of like Ivory Coast almost, where it's like you're still in the Champions League. He's still yeah, like if you win two trophies and then just I'm out, see you. Then he'll get another major job. Now I think Thomas Tuchel will end up at like a um maybe like if Juve lets go of uh Allegri. Probs high fives. No, I think they bring him back. I think if you win both, they bring you back. I think if he wins the Champions League, then he just, like, leaves in a high if they lose the Bundesliga. But I think... I I, it would, I think if he wins both, if he manages to win both, which could be affected today because Leverkusen plays today. Leverkusen plays against uh, Mainz today, which is a game they should win, but let's say they lose and the door is open for Bayern again. Like... Tuchel will end up at Barcelona. I don't think he's a good fit for Barcelona. I really, I really don't think he's a good fit for Barcelona. I don't think he'd want to stay at Bayern. I think, dude, if you win the Champions League and the Bundesliga and you pull off that kind of turnaround, I think you'd want to stay. I'd be really surprised if you didn't want to stay. If Xavi goes to Bayern, who does Liverpool pick to replace Klopp? They probably take like to Zerbi and he ends up flopping super hard. That's what everybody's like saying about it. Brandon, thank you for the tier one. I appreciate you. Isn't it like resack compensation something crazy? Yeah, but they're like hating on him right now. You expecting the Italian teams to make educated financial decisions? Absolutely not. Although they are very good at finding ways to be able to spend in the transfer market, even when they shouldn't be able to spend in the transfer market. Barcelona can't afford any compensation. Well, they wouldn't need to. Tuchel's gone at the end of the season, and Xavi's leaving at the end of the season. They don't need, they don't need to afford any compensation to bring in Thomas Tuchel. I just don't think they'd want to bring in Thomas Tuchel. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, don't, I, I don't think they would want to do that. I don't think Xavi Alonso will leave Leverkusen this season. Explain that take. So Tuco could go to Jamaica. Do I have that? Uh, do I still have that image? That was one of my favorite images. Please tell me I have that. Yes! Thomas Tuchel, the head coach of Jamaica. We st I still have that stupid image. That we <laughs> Oh, I love football manager, dude. That's so funny. My brother was leading the reggae boys to World Cups. That's all I'm saying. He was leading the reggae boys to World Cups. No, this isn't real. In, my, in our football manager save, Thomas Tuchel ended up as the head coach of Jamaica. And so I think it was, was it I all that made that? Maybe you should do that. He looks very happy in that image. Maybe you should do that. Maybe you'd really enjoy that. Wagwan, my generals. Gut no, sorry, it's Guten Tag, my generals. Say Magger Thistle are famous now and a bunch of amateur players want to play for them? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Because they lost 51 to nothing and it went viral. Please post that photo. I guarantee you I've already uh, tweeted it. All right, we go way back in the annals of Zealand history. I definitely tweeted that picture. I did not waste that picture. It was probably, what, two years ago? This is before the World Cup now. Um, that's the graphics tweet. This is me. That's a picture of Lelou, Joe. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Uh, 
so many great pictures of me in here. It's hard to choose. Uh, come on. I tweeted this out. There's no way I didn't. We're in Floridsdorfer territory now. Look at that. Wellness check. We need a wellness check. Does anybody see the two Caliban? Dude, did I never tweet this out? I might not have. We're pretty far back there in the annals of uh, my images. We're back at Syracuse now. That's a pretty young-looking Christian Pulisic. Even younger-looking me, to be honest. I haven't seen it. Did I miss it? Arsenal, thank you for the five months, dude. I appreciate you. Thank you for supporting the stream. Enjoy the bacon. Enjoy the emotes. What's that wig? Oh, you mean that? Now we're back. Uh, yeah, I, 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 it wasn't this far back. We never posted it. This is literally when I was living at home. That's wild. I totally thought I tweeted that. Fine. Dude, what is that picture, Kev? Dear Lord. I, I'll, I'll tweet it out so that you have it. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm like accidentally deleting stuff all over the place. Okay. No context needed. No. Can I tag Thomas Stuckel? Is that his official account? Yes. I'm so tagging him. Is that like a German account? Uh yes. So he has a he has an English one, I think. Oh, definitely not. Okay. They banned Twitch in Turkey? What? Absolutely fabricous. Thank you for the 34 months. Europe is the second smallest continent in size, but the third largest in population. Those are both pretty middling stats, but... I mean, again, interesting. Am I going to watch the TST tournament? Yeah, I kind of vaguely kept track of it last year. So they actually reached out to me to be like... Um, to be like part of one of the team ownership groups. And I wish I had that kind of money. That would have been so fun. But I don't. Because we go to Faroe Islands instead. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with the choices I make in my life. But that would have been cool. First kick, then Twitch. That's a shame, dude. There's a lot of Turkish uh, football manager streamers, if I remember right. No, I know Twitch is out of South Korea. The servers were way too expensive because the companies in South Korea were jacking up the prices for the servers.
Jim Rennie, thank you so much for the prime. We just say, like, hear me out. So idea for Tuchel's next job. Cool. <laughs> now you have the picture. Now you have the picture. Congratulations. You have Tuchel. Jamaica manager is the picture. Am I planning on doing a follow-up to the investor uh, uh, video on Zealandism? Probably, because the investor deal is dead. So this is uh, next thing in the what's happening section. Thank you guys for putting stuff in there. Um, is the investor deal in the Bundesliga died, uh, which is, I, I, I don't think the actual investor deal was that bad. But I was then educated, and by educated, I mean beaten over the head by German people uh, until I understood that it wasn't what was being proposed. It was how it was being voted on. Because essentially, you know, obviously there's a 50 plus one rule in Germany, and so they select all of these people that, that represent the fans at each of these clubs. But then they held an anonymous vote where allegedly a few people were going against the will of the fans of their clubs to vote the other direction so that 8% of the TV revenue of the Bundesliga would go to a private company that would then also help out with marketing. And they would get paid, uh, you know, a billion dollars for that or whatever. So I, I didn't think it was a bad deal when I looked at the actual part of the deal. But the Bundesliga fans were protesting because it was a private vote, one that had been scummily rescheduled in the middle of the winter break. Uh, and so... Good news is, after the protests and the tennis balls and the remote control cars, Hans Joachim Watzke, uh, who is the leader of Dortmund, uh, announced that the deal is dead. They they killed the deal. It is not happening. Major Milos, thank you for the 10 months, my dude. Thanks for supporting the stream, brother. Townsend, thank you for the two, the two months. I see you. I see you now. Said you're too capitalist and freedom for it. <laughs> you're too capitalist in USA for it. No, I'm just being honest, dude. I mean, I like my opinions are the same as anybody else's opinions. They can suck, right? But I still, I still like reading it. I was like, yeah, the Bundesliga is falling behind the Premier League when it comes to marketing. So selling eight percent of their TV rights to a company that could come in and help them with that sort of marketing, right? They still have control over their TV rights and everything. That company would not have enough control to be able to force them to play matches anywhere other than Germany or make them play matches at a different time or whatever. They would just be there to assist with their marketing internationally. Like, that made sense to me. Like, that made sense to my brain. I was like, okay. But, you know, they, the, the vote was scummy and done in January and hidden, and I understand why the protests were happening. I'm just saying. Would have been a first step to that crap, though. Like, I'm going to be honest. There's a healthy balance, right? I think with everything in life, there's a healthy balance. There is a healthy balance, right? And, and, and obviously, I think most of football has gone so far in the other direction that you've got the Spanish Super Cup or whatever being played in Saudi Arabia, where, you know, being just inherently afraid of something because it has anything to do with the money or the, the like, like anything... That or, or any any foreign influence at all isn't necessarily right. Just look at what it's doing. And if you like what it's doing, then then go with it. If you don't like what it's doing, then don't go with it. And you've got a very, like, you, you know, very good system in Germany set up to, to counteract that. You've got the 50 plus one share, and so you're electing these people to run these clubs, and then those people are able to represent your interests. I agree that you should protest against, you know, anonymous votes because that counteracts kind of the, the spirit of it. So protesting against anonymous votes makes complete sense. But if that vote had been transparent and it had been voted through, I think protesting against it would not would like, you know, I mean, you have the right to protest against whatever the hell you want to protest against. Right. But I, I think that, um, that it I would have been something that I would have been in favor of if they were talking about doing it in MLS. 
you know, if I was in the same situation, I would have been in favor of it. But of course, there were also people in Germany that were in favor of it and people that weren't. And there were more people that weren't. And they made their opinions known and exercised their right to protest and changed it. Dude, a 50 plus one is not falling anytime soon. Did you see what just happened when they tried to sell, a, sell, not give away, sell for a billion dollars, 8% of their TV rights for the next 20 years? They were selling it and also bringing that company in to, mar to, to help with marketing. They tried to do 8% of one small part of the month, like, and all the, you know, remote control cars, all that stuff happened because of the 8%. If they try to get rid of 50 plus one, I think Germany might just go to war with the FA. I'm, I'm talking like Prussian military, top hats, flares, sabers, storming the Bastille of the FA building. Like that, it, come on. They, 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 yeah. If Germany wouldn't have a civil war, there wouldn't be anybody on the other side of the civil war. <laughs> it would be one-sided. Have I played Helldivers 2? No, I haven't. But I have a, one of the friends that I game with, one of my one of my normie friends that I game with, um, he texted me. He was like, yeah, this game looks great. We should play it. So I probably will soon. Did I get the Lazio job? No, they did not offer me the job after offering me an interview. Uh -uh. Yeah, no, they're like, Germany would not based off the intense level of protest just for holding a secret, or not even a secret vote, an anonymous vote. They held an anonymous vote, and it set off a giant wave of protests, right, that ended up killing off the entire deal. If they tried to get rid of 50 plus 1, I fully trust the German fans to do absurd things. My normie friends? Yeah, I'm starting to pick up terminology from hanging around people like Carl. <laughs> they use phrases like that to describe their friends that don't like Streve or whatever. Which I have a lot of. I have friends. Right? None of them really know what I do either. Which I always think is funny. I'm an international man of mystery that wears absolutely dope pants. I mean, check these out. Look at those. How sick are those pants, dude? Look at those dope pants. Nineties goalkeeper pants. I have actually worn these for like pickup soccer games in New York before. <laughs> I've actually worn these for pickup soccer matches in New York before. Oh no, Turkey United went into administration. Oh. That sucks. Clark Osborne has today issued the following statement regarded Turkey. It is with sincere regret that I advise that circumstances beyond my control during the last five weeks have brought me to the position that I am unable to continue financial support for the club, and I have today filed on behalf of the directors an intention to appoint an administrator for the club and the company. That sucks so hard. Yo, Rambling Epic! Thank you for the five gifted subs, dude! Thank you for the five gifted subs. Thank you for supporting the stream with kindness. If you got one, Silfer, Dreams and Hamden Staff, Spectacle, spe Spectacular Maverick, Jim. Enjoy the bacon. Enjoy the emotes. Enjoy your ad free experience for a whole month, courtesy of Rambling Epic. Thank you, dude, for the gifts. Yeah. Did that not, like, no sound played, right? The stream elements okay today? I don't think Torquay used to be in the Prem, but they were in the Football League for a really long time. They're not right now. They're like fifth tier 
or six tier. They're one of those. Yeah, so they're uh, League One, League Two, Conference League Two. The okay, so no, no, never mind. They were never really. It doesn't seem. They were never top flight, but they've existed for a very long time in like the second and third and fourth divisions of England. And they got relegated out of the conference to the sixth division, and they might. You start going down to the seventh division, you're talking about fading into irrelevance. Yeah, I just said I I don't I don't actually have an issue with this person other than that they just didn't run the club well. Uh they're yeah, hold on. I'd also like to pay tribute to Torquay United family. Oh wait, hold on. I'd like to reiterate what I said multiple times that Torquay United is blessed with fantastic and passionate support. And I am sorry that we have not been able to reach our goal for the club despite significant effort and investment. In my opinion, maybe I'm just conservative financially or whatever, but you should never be putting your club in a position where it's possible that you can enter into uh, administration, that you can actually run out of money. You should never be putting your club in that position. Even in football manager, I don't do that. Taunton has entered the chat, but... What's the biggest city in England that's never had a team in the top flight? Bath. What's up? I trivia. Francis, thank you for the six months. Enjoy the ad-free experience. Thanks for supporting the stream. Captain Chaps, thank you for the two months. I appreciate you. I missed last stream, but I wanted to add that the highest paid state employee in Maine is actually the University of Maine men's hockey coach. Nice. That's sick. I would never do that on football manager laughs and taunting. Ilias Chair is sentenced to prison for assaulting a truck driver. What, did he hit him with a chair? Am I right? Didn't have a leg to stand on. Now, Bob, come on, dude. I, what, like, what possible reason do you have to be assaulting a truck driver? What are you doing? <laughs> Is there any, like, details of the story? So, according in Antwerp, where the Morocco International grew up, sentenced chair to jail for a year with a further 12 months suspended on Friday morning. He's been ordered to pay the victim nearly 14,000 pounds in compensation for the injuries. Oh, Lord. Well, chair's brother, Jaber. Uh, was uh, has also been handed a prison sentence. The two are accused of assaulting a truck driver named Niels in court with a rock. I was about to say, oh, jail, but he, I guess he's already going to jail. With a rock? Dude. What are you and your brother doing attacking a... He broke his skull. 12 months if somebody broke my skull with a rock i'd be like i never you're never seeing daylight again learn siberia buddy he's expected to remain available to play for qpr while he appeals the sentence The club are and have been in regular contact with Ilias Chair's legal team regarding a charge of assault which has been made against him. Okay. Uh, the legal proceeding is yet to... Well, how do you think the guy broke his skull? Did he trip and fall on the rock? I suppose that's possible. Unlikely, given the present circumstances. It's yet to reach his conclusion. It did! 
The legal proceeding reached its conclusion. He was found guilty and put in prison for a year. He has decided to appeal that decision, which for some reason, apparently in the Netherlands, that means you're free while the appeal is going on, which fair enough, that's how their legal system works. But it did reach the conclusion. The trial's over. He got put in jail for a year. The club will be making no further comment. But you're making a statement. You're not making a comment, but you're making a statement. He's expected to remain available. Expected. I suppose them saying he is expected means we don't know for sure until we see Elias Chair play for QPR again. Antwerp's public prosecutor told a January hearing, according to many people involved, Elias Chair lashed out at Niels with a stone and knocked him unconscious. He suffered a skull fracture two centimeters long and was taken to the hospital in reams in critical condition. We're talking about somebody that almost murdered somebody with a rock. I want, I want details of this story. He had to recover in a Belgian hospital and couldn't do his job as a lorry driver for a long time. The blow was almost fatal, and he still feels the after effects. Uh, Chair has been a key player for QPR this season, playing 31 times, scoring four and assisting five. The London side are in a desperate situation, probably because one of their best players nearly killed somebody with a rock. They're also near the relegation zone, or they're in the relegation zone. Chair spent the majority of his career at QPR. A court heard that Chair, his brother, and his friends got into an argument with a truck with the truck in Basile, France, in the summer of 2020. They had been waiting for a bus back to Belgium after a kayaking trip before a fracas broke out. I'm sorry. How? What? There's so many, like, non-sequiturs in this story. There's so many, like... Oh, they were on a kayaking trip in France. Where? Are you kayaking the Seine? What are you doing? So, that, like, that's the least important thing in this entire story. I'm just curious. And then you just... I've never talked to a truck driver. What, you're just stand Like, it looks written by AI, I know. They're waiting for a bus back to Belgium. So you're, like, at a bus stop, and a lorry driver is just, like... Like what? That'd be funny if the lawyer like made it up. Like they were kayaking, they were clubbing all night or something. So they're waiting for a bus back to Belgium. And then so they somehow get in a fight with a truck driver. Wait. Th I mean, this happened three years ago. This happened four years ago. Three and a half years ago. Was this dude on the World Cup team? Was this dude on the World Cup team? Yes! This dude had nearly killed somebody with a rock two years earlier. And he was at the World Cup. That's tough, dude. That's a tough look. That's a tough look. He's been playing for QPR for three years. He was at the World Cup with Morocco. I'm assuming he was at the AFCONs as well. I, I, I dude just like knocked somebody unconscious, cracked their skull with a rock. That's got to be wild. That's been hanging over his head for a long time. And then if you're the dude that got hit in head, like in, in, this was you know confirmed by the court, so this isn't like a innocent until proven guilty here. This is you know legally this has been confirmed that Ilias Chair hit this dude in the head with a rock. If you're the dude that got hit in the head with the rock. And you're watching the guy that did that to you play at the World Cup. You got to be like, dude, where? What have we done to the world? It's not confirmed, bro. It is. An appeal is different than the trial, right? But they had the trial. The trial's done. He got sentenced to a year in prison for hitting the dude in the head with a rock.
You know? The trial is done. You can appeal the trial. There's a lot. Look, like, I don't know the Dutch legal system, but I'm assuming it's based off common law the same way most Western legal systems are. And so, you know, the appeal process is essentially you try and point out things that were missed in the first trial. But the first trial is done. First trial's done. That trial is done, right? There was a trial in a court of law that found him guilty of hitting this dude in the head with a rock. Doesn't know it's Belgium. Ah, dang it. The lowlands is what I meant to say. The lowlands. The lands of low. The lowlands. I must be exonerating circumstances. I don't know, dude. My my look, my perception's really distorted. Okay, if you sneeze on somebody in the United States, you're getting five years. So like, you know, in in Europe, it it like, I I don't know. I'm not. A, I'm clearly not an expert in Belgian legal matters because I keep thinking they're Dutch legal matters. All I'm telling you is that the trial is done. They're gonna try to appeal it. Obviously, everybody should try to appeal, but. You know, I would need somebody that's involved in the case to tell me whether the appeal is likely or unlikely, but the trial is done. A court has sentenced him for hitting a dude in the head with a rock. And that dude then played at the World Cup and then has played for QPR over the last three years. Which, while I don't have a problem with that, because innocent until proven guilty, it's just awkward. It's definitely awkward. What type of rock was it? Shungite, I think. I think it was a Shungite. Definitely Shungite, chat. No, but that's crazy. This is crazy that a dude's just been playing for years, was at the World Cup of the feel-good team and everything, and he just got, like, convicted by a court in Belgium for hitting a dude in the head with a rock before any of that happened. That is uh, that is wild. Thank you guys for popping that and what's happening. That is That is crazy. Chris, thank you so much for the prime, dude. Thanks for supporting the stream. All right, this is what we got on tap today. We've got Champions League Atlanta to kick the stream off. And then we've got Rin, Metz, Strasbourg, Leverkusen, Lorient. And then we enter into a bit of a winter break. It's not very long. It's like two weeks, but it'll be welcome by the time we get to it because we have fair about a uh, fair bout of fixture congestion before we get there. Okay. Let's see who is going to be playing in this game against Atalanta. A Bulgarian footballer named Baldaisky was prosecuted for murder. He punched a guy, and the guy fell, hit his head, and died. Baldaisky didn't even go to jail. He even played for the hometown team for half the season. I mean, that's tough, right? You're talking to a guy who's really like, I just kind of avoid that type of conflict. You know, I'm not really an angry or aggressive person. Um, but I think if you're hitting somebody in the head with a rock, that's one thing. If you just punch a guy, I feel like that's a little less violent than using props. I mean, like, if we're, if we're going to create... <laughs> Dude, violence tier list, hell yeah. I'm just, I'm just saying. Like, if you, you know... It's like one of those family guy skits where like you trip somebody, but then they like fall onto a nuclear bomb or something. And you're like, well, I didn't plant the nuclear bomb there. Sports people are awesome at getting away with. Oh, wait, sports people are just good at getting away with crimes. You guys heard about Quincy Proms or whatever that dude tried to smuggle like three metric tons of drugs into the Netherlands. And now he's playing in Russia. So they're like never going to catch him. So it's like a weird skit. Have you ever watched Family Guy? The whole thing's weird skits. Thoughts on Danny Alves, man? I mean, that's another person that got convicted in a court of law of doing something terrible. So fair. Like, I don't, I don't know. Uh, fair. 
He's he's going to jail for like five years, right? Dude was a great fullback. Apparently, also a terrible person. I not everybody can be a great person, um, unfortunately. Yeah, problems are just sentenced to three years, but it doesn't matter because he's in Russia, as far as I understand. Not exactly like an extradition treaty going on there. Oh, yeah, I don't have freaking Mocha Winna for the next month. That sucks. All right. Kovashevich, Ramsey, Alexov, Kirodia, Montiel. Uh, Bravo, Martin, Zendala, Sage, Shelderup, Schumacher. Let's freaking do it. Am I going to play bold? Are we going to play bold at home? Have you got Gabriel Vidovich? Oh, Gabriel. Yeah, I mean, we have great vibes. We have excellent vibes in the team right now. I'm going to play bold. Play bold. I'm going to play full of swagger and confidence. We'll see what kind of press they're trying to put on. Because they're in a 4-2-3-1. Their press could cause us problems. But it's Champions League time, baby. It's Champions League. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that beautiful St. Etienne on a Champions League night. Atalanta and the Green Men. The Martians themselves. Let's go, baby. Let's go. We have played four Champions League matches. We won the first one. We have lost the next three, each by one goal. But that was Arsenal at home. Road matches against Sociedad in Leipzig. We now we are at home for just the third time out of out of four potential. No, yeah, well, it's only the second time we're home. Actually, in three of our first four matches were on the road. Come on, Montiel. I like the fluid running. I like that pass. Oh, Ramsey, you've got to get that ball somewhere else, Martins. If he'd scored that, I would have done a backflip out the window. Basil, thank you for the 14 months. My friend loves to talk about ancient history, but they tend to babble on. Nice. <laughs> I'm going to go with a B on that one. Just a solid middle-of-the-road B. I know, Lazio rejected us. We're killing it, dude. Oh, Montiel, dang it. Oh, nice, Ramsey. Well read. Okay, come on. We have the momentum graph right now. I'm feeling I'm feeling good about this. Ramsey. Pedro Bravo. Yes, sir. Jean Martins. Dang it. Oh, but Ramsey. Oh, Calvin Ramsey. Yeah, the TTS doesn't seem to be working today. I don't know what's up with that. I don't have anything muted on my end. I think Stream Elements is just having a mare. Not a lot of shots to show for our possessional, you know, control. Oh, yes. Yes. Love where this is starting. Sage. Shelter up. Oh. Wall pass, Joel Indala. Why do we keep cutting in? Everybody is cutting in, even guys that aren't supposed to be. Like Ramsey, Montiel, now Joel Indala. They're all cutting in. Like, they being forced to it? Ooh, bad pass. We're pouncing on a bad pass. Shelter up. 
Uh, that's not really in Dalla's game. That's not really the number one choice to make there, but good first half. Yes. Now, if we can turn this into a win, I'm happy with our performance, though. If we can turn this into a win, we're going to be in a much better spot than we just were. Battling for every point here. We are fighting for every point. Draw is not bad. Win is better. Fighting for every single point. Come on. Just a moment of creativity here. That's all right. Kiarodi, uh, Bravo. Just keep it with the center backs. They don't have the men to press this. Good. Ramsey. Again with the cut in. Like, what? Do we, oh, it worked. Oh! Come on, baby! Oh, we're off and running now. It's Joel and Dalla from Calvin Ramsey. I guess uh, it was really good. He drew the fullback, gave Indala an angle. That's excellent. Any subs that we would want to make? I'm going to go Bondo for Sage. See you after AFCON, Lorenzo. Thank you for your service. All right, we got to be all over this. They've made lots of changes to their tactic and the way it's playing. We got to make sure we're closing down the right parts of it here. Old dude, thank you for the 10 months. My friend was showing me his tool shed and pointed to a ladder. That's my step ladder. And he said, I never knew my real ladder. <laughs> That's so bad. <laughs> I'm going to give you a C. That's so bad. Dude, I, uh, once Forza can play, well, actually, Shelter Up can play Striker. We'll put him there. Arnu can't play there, but Joel Andala can for some reason. So what does have Joel Andala play? Oh, I mean, but I don't have. So Arnu for Shelter Up, Forza for Schumacher. Sforza is going to be a deep lying forward. I didn't know he could play striker, but he's a good passer and he's probably, you know, Schumacher's been playing terribly, so why not? I never knew my real ladder. Oh, he should have just sent that. Instead, he's committed a really unfortunate turnover. But we slowed the ball down, so that was good. Oh, Montiel. Good God, man. How do you get beat twice that bad? All right, then. Well, I'm not going to give up on it that easily. We're making changes. We're going to go for it. Credit to them. Barbecued my whole team on the way up the field. That was a frustrating goal. But we want the win. We're going for it, chat.
I'm really happy he was able to score his first goal of the season, though. You know, I'm really happy for him. Not very. Oh, good God. Not very. All right. We got everything set up the way we want. Hopefully we can uh, force a mistake with this. Oh, well. Little out of position there. By a little out of position, I mean completely. Oi, our new. Oh, it was there. I didn't think he was off. Good line by our team, but I, I did not think he was offside. I can just tell that was a pass that if I'd seen the entire thing, I'd be very frustrated by it. Oh, nice, Martins. Kierodia, you're freak. Wow. We just bottled it again. We have lost four consecutive Champions League league stage matches by one goal. Uh, in this one, we just completely handed it away because we were just the better team for 70 minutes. I That second goal, I don't even have an explanation for that. Kirodi is a really good ball playing center back. They had two shots in the last 30 minutes of the game. Uh, and we just handed them two tap ins to go from winning to losing. Uh, that That's just brutal. That is just savage. That's absolutely brutal. Just let points get away, and now we, you know, that win would have put us back in the top 24, but now we're sitting uh, five matches played on three points in uh, Champions League. So that next match against Leverkusen, who's apparently right next to us in that table, is going to be going to be very pivotal to see if we can get into the 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 last 24 teams That was a sh that was a shatterer. That was a match we could have won. It, was it wasn't any of the you know, and not all of these matches we can win, right? We've got freaking Liverpool away, Leverkusen, and then Porto. That that was a shatterer, though. That that was a, that was a will breaker right there. We were right where we needed to be. And just made the mistakes at exactly the wrong times. Montiel and Pedro Bravo getting barbecued. And then, you know, Kiarodia just passing it to the other team. All he had to do was hoof that out or, or play it wide to the fullback. 
sucked what's my favorite gorilla song dude this is the only one i know so the answer would be this one uh ricky thank you for the two months appreciate it dude the new live channel editor. So if you're watching some of the stuff of the live channel, uh, the live channel, Jay Ricky is one of the people that throws those up. So you owe him your thanks and probably your allegiance. Yeah, that was a well breaker. <sighs> what happened to the Borussia offer? Oh, that was a while ago. They uh, also didn't give us the job. So we've been at St. Etienne now that we're in our third year, and apparently when you get to your third year, you can receive offers from clubs. We've been offered interviews with, I mean, Monaco have offered us a job interview, but I don't really see the appeal of that over what we're doing right now. Monaco finished in sixth, which means they're in the Europa League, and they are, uh, well, they're at least doing something in it. They're in 20th. But I don't think we take that job interview. I feel like this is the second time they've offered me the job. I, I don't think we take that at all. I am going to say we decline the interview. I'll, I'll, I'll keep our spot in the Champions League. and I'm going to decline the job interview. I'm happy to stay uh, here. We finished above Monaco in the league last season. We're above them in the league this season. We're in a better European competition. They have a half-star rep on us. Um, but they don't, if I remember look, last time we looked at it, they don't have a lot more money than we do either. I, I just, you know, we're, turn, we're turning it down. We like being at Saint at the end over Monaco. I reckon a high percentage would take my. I, yeah, but I, I, I mean, for all the reasons I just said, though, I don't think Monaco's uh, an improvement over where we are right now. I could watch the F1 rate. Right? I mean, true. I'd probably be able to get on one of the. Uh, Probably be able to get on one of those uh, yachts in the harbor for that race, but alas, we're missing that opportunity. At home against Stad Renee, away against Mets, and then whatever we've got next. Aiden, thank you for the eight months. The stone guy we were talking about earlier got me thinking of the NHL player in 2004 getting arrested for conspiracy to commit murder and spending 90 months in prison. He put a hit out on his agent. It's a crazy story if you haven't read about it. His name is Mike Danton. Turns out there's some crazy people out there. That's insane. What did the dude think it was a movie? He put a hit out on his agent. <laughs> you know you can just fire him, right? F1 season already over. Dude, I didn't realize people watched F1 for the parody. I thought you guys just watched it for the cars going fast because there is no parody in F1. There is, there's zero. There hasn't been for a very long time, and then there's one season where one team's going like this and the other team's going like this, and they meet, and then there's no parody again. I hate to break it to you. As somebody that has gotten into at least keeping track of what's happening in F1, there is no parody. It's fun to watch the races, but there's no parody. And as somebody that always roots for the underdog, there's no real like, oh, wow, Williams won. You know, like, <laughs> no way. Uh, what is this? This is men's best player. Well, it looks like Jamal Musiala is that guy right now. Averaging a 7.72, then Sokka, then Shuamini. All right, got them three. Put my votes in based on average rating. I'm not a complex man. 
I like the vroom vroom. Dude, that's fair, man. If you like the vroom vroom, there's no better place to vroom vroom. I'm just saying. Bellingham's not on the list. It is kind of wild he's not on the list because he is definitely getting plenty of playing time. What the heck is that? We have a 25-year-old on our second team. Yeah, well, I can't imagine our FFP would be a problem. This is really just because I failed the whole develop the best youth system in the country. Like, the only reason that, oh, come on. Oh, sorry, I'm not playing defensively or making the most of set pieces. You're the one that decided to put that there. All right, Kia Rodia, you are off. That was shameful last time out. That was shameful, brother. I My striker sub is Juan Sforza. You know how sad that makes me? Very sad. All right, this is going to be tough. This is going to be tough. Especially with, uh, well, we, oh, wait, we have Louise Me Cruz. Okay, so no, I can pop Louise. I have, I'm sorry, I forgot I have Louise Me Cruz. I can run Louise Me Cruz and it'll be all right, but I need to go to the B team thing because we have some guys that maybe shouldn't be on that list. Branko should be. Branko should be running. But Luis Me Cruz is my backup striker, apparently. Something like that. Oh, sick. My U.S. stuff. Dude, I'm so good at that. First ever Zealand stream. What's up, LMC? Welcome to the stream, dude. Uh, set pieces cost you buying job? I don't think it was set pieces. I think it was um, league expectation. No, it was all the other ones have been like league expectations or. Oh, Bayern Munich are interested in Xiao Martins. You better pay a lot of money for him. That's who you want. You better pay a lot of money. Arsenal. Oh, it was Arsenal. They didn't like my set pieces. Ah, I got it. Shepo Mavunla. This is a big time signing right here. This kid's the bee's knees, and we need him. Because he is not in the South African national team yet, but he's a very good striker, and we're signing him for half a million. So, Shepo Mavunla, I continue to bring in that South African influence. All right. Are we at home? Yes. Uh, should I bring my fancy aggressive tactic, or should we... No, okay. They're going 4-2-3-1. They're projected to go 4-2-3-1. I'm going to go with... My more reserved tactic. You know, I'm a reserved guy. I uh, Indala, Shelter up, Schumacher, Martins, Torres, Bravo, Montiel, Rual, Alexov, Xavi, Espar. Da -na 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 -na. Uh, do 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 do. Okay, deep breath, ready to rock and roll. Missing four guys that are first team players at AFCON right now, so our rotations are a little tight, but we're going to come into this match, try and play very reasonably. I'm going to play with great reason. 
We're not going to get too aggressive. We're not going to go crazy. We're not doing anything. We're not doing any of that. We're not going crazy. We're just chilling. We're going to catch what they're doing, and we're going to throw it back at them. Howdy, I'm Pat. Thank you for the 30 months. Thank you for supporting the stream for a long time. Enjoy the ad-free experience. And thank you for allowing us to do stuff like the, uh, the Faroe Islands video with that specific sub right there. Last I checked, he rejected a bid from United for Rodie A. How's he now? He's hurt. <laughs> He's been a glass cannon all year. So hopefully he'll be back soon. He's apprehensive about the instruction to close down Belosian because Belosian's stronger than him. That's a hilarious take. All right. We have lost. Uh, the only losses on that list in our former in the Champions League, both by one goal, all in heartbreaking fashion. But we have three consecutive wins in Ligue 1. And that has put us in eighth place with two matches in hand on Marseille to try and climb in. Um, we are a point out of European positions in the top six, which is our board expectation somehow this season. And our goal is uh, to get back to where we finished last season while also being able to get to the knockouts of the Champions League. That was our stated goal. Got to finish top 24 in the Champions League league table. Massive six-pointer at home against Bayer Leverkusen, but we have three league matches before that. I would love to win all three of them including against Todd Rene, who's had a tremendous start to the season. Oh, Rual! Oh, baby, Anthony Rual. Look at that defense. Uh, advice. Suck less. We're there. Well, we're not there for a knockdown. Nobody ever knocks it down. Why didn't he just float ahead or towards the goal like everybody else? What is this nonsense? Do I ever go on vacation or just sim? Uh, no. I like playing the matches. Oh, my goodness gracious. Why did we not just let Kovacevic catch that ball? Please let the man with the gloves do his job. Shout the competition. Thank you for the 28 months. Missed yesterday. How are we in the league? Uh, we're in seventh right now. Uh, so not bad. You know, we, we pulled a little comeback. Champions League is the bigger concern, although every match, you know, we're just trying to get as many points as we can. It's a battle all year. Anytime you're getting into Europe for the first time, it's always a battle transitioning your roster to that, especially when you only have three and a half star reputation and the Europe is Champions League. That's a tough fight. We're playing pretty well right now against Stad Rene, though. They've been great this year. One way. Oh, don't like it. Good save. What is he? How do you not save that? My God. This is the last year Montiel plays left back as well. Just the way this game works, I just can't live with short uh, fullbacks. But how do you not save this? I mean, it's like there's one place he can go with that shot. This is the last year Montiel's there. He's he, We're in the second year of him not really helping the team that much. Thank you, Jan. And, and just what the football manager for the for consecutive years, short center backs are just a huge liability. Just the way that those crosses come in, it's always like 1v1 in that spot. And then you've got the, of course, the throw in quick crosses, the back post as well. Amontiel, he's also taking up a foreign player spot, and we only have four of those. Or like a non EU spot, or whatever I'm supposed to call it. This would be a really good time to score, guys. Dude, you had a free header. Oh, it's our ball anyways, but what are you doing? Oh, get it back to him. Shelter up with a one-two. Still shelter up. Still. Oh, we shanked that. What the hell?
Oh, yeah, Montiel with Jacques Ecomier. Had just about enough of that. And Bondo's coming in for Torres. And my lack of a substitute striker continues to be concerning because Jan Schumacher is dropping a generational stinker. But guess we just don't have a lot of options there. So those guys up top are just going to have to figure it out. We are going to switch the way we're playing. So Martins is going to go over there. All right, the shift. We start it with that giveaway. That's how we start out of the half. Come on, boys. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Make the play. Martins. Yes. Shelter up. Yes. Ecomier is there. Jacques. Yes, Gabon didn't make it to Afcon. Shelter up. Let's go. No. <laughs> Best move of the day. Uh, and apparently we're not even done. Ecomier. Shelter up again. Shelly. Shelly. Oh, it has to be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Onrox, thank you for the 27 months on my 27th B-Day. Nice. Happy birthday, Onrox. Hope you're having a good one. Nice, unnecessarily good finish from Warren Bondo there. Warren Bondo, an incredible attacking midfielder in this game. No idea how that happens, but he just is. Bravo, my God. Are they flagging this? Thank you so much. They were screening the keeper, obviously. Obviously screening the keeper. Oh, I wasn't even looking for the offside. It was a freaking goal off a corner. Bondo. Warren Bondo. Joel Indala. Indala to Bondo. That's just not really anything, but... Oh, they have Peacock, Farrell, and goal. Nice. Keep it up, boys. Keep it up. Oh, let's go. Eat. We got to eat. Oh, yes, Martins. Joao Martins. Bravo. That's fine. We're chill. We're, we are chilling like a villain. Indala. Oh, look at the underlap. Look at the underlap. Use your eyes. I know you don't have them, but try. Imagine you have eyes. That was a nice run by Xavi Espar. Oh, now he's going all the way. He's got Shelly. Ay, ay, ay. All right, when do you think you got, when, when do we want to make a shift here? What are we thinking? When do we want to make a shift? All right, we have um, three stop, just three subs. So I can make the subs individually if I want to. I'm going to get Indala for our new. We do have Schumacher playing poorly, but as we've covered, there's not a ton we can do about that. Sforza and Luis Cruz are the options. I don't like those options. Um, do not like them. So... We have Sforza, we've got Vanden Bowman, we've got Ramsey, but Xavi Espar is actually having a pretty good game today. So we're just going to, we're going to send Nico Arnu out there. As Joel Indala is worn out. And hmm, let's see. Shelter up. Oh my goodness, Schumacher! Oh! Dang it, brother! That would have been very, uh, that would have been nice. Ah, the three points, please, gentlemen. The three points, please. 
Oh, Nico. That is such a bad shot, dude. All right, I... Dang it. You know... I am a believer in the analytics on this. That it is always worth going for it in this situation. And we've been the better team, and so it absolutely is worth it for us to go for it in this situation. It's just like... You got you, you to gotta swallow your nerves on it and just be like, you know what? We're doing it. You know what? We're doing it. Sforza, you're in. Uh, you're taking Bravo. We're going for it. Um, talking about backing off. Absolutely not. Give me one, Sforza, and then maybe the last couple of minutes we'll go Louise me because clearly Schumacher's not doing it. Arnu. Oh, I thought they had that ball. We're good. Bondo. Oh, our new. That would have been so cool. Press that. That's our ball. It's got to be our ball, guys. Thank you. All right, here we go. We got to go for it. Got to go for it on fourth down here. Bondo, make the pass. Oh, not the pass I was talking about. How can you not telepathically understand what I'm saying? <gasps> Alexov, what a play. It should be they're not out of position because we're going slow. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Sforza. Oh, that's wall pass. Arnu, Arnu! No, oh, it just missed Bondo. Oh, but we're not. We are done. Never mind. Okay, what do you guys think, Cruz? He's got quality. He loves a big moment also. I... <sighs> Fine. Louise me. We're in a shadow striker deep lying forward that... Nah, he's getting plenty involved. We don't, we don't need to get any crazier with that. All right, Sforza is going to get into that area. Cruz is going to drop. We're going to inside forward you, uh, Shelly. All right, Louise me, Cruz. I don't even know what to expect here. I just know Schumacher is probably not going to be able to do a lot with the space we have here. Nothing weird. No funny business, and that's our ball. Good. Thank goodness. You see that ball kind of corkscrewing towards the goal. You never quite know what football manager is going to send your way. We're fine. Shelter up. Oh, that was bold. And we're, we're looking for bold now. That was not a good pass by Bondo. Xavi Espar with a brilliant play. What a play by Xavi Espar. Shelter up going first time. That Luis Mi is not a tall guy. Xavi, I would have... Oh, the, uh, the, oh man, Xavi. Xavi Espar pulling the strings out here. Arnu. Oh, no, that could have gone anywhere. All right, get it wide. Look at Xavi. A Xavi, that should still be a highlight. All right, I'm going to go very attacking. Just for a couple minutes. Just for a couple minutes. Bro! We were so much... Oh, no. That's not it. We were so much better than them. Oh, that sucks. Look at that second half, dude. Look at that second half. 2.18 XG. All we get to show for that is a point. Ugh. That sucks, though. A couple of results that, uh, you know, so far today, a couple of results that haven't been reflective of the true flow of the match, I would say. 
know, football manager and uh, those pulling the strings, the football manager gods, if they wanted to make, if they wanted to change that, I would be, I would be open to it. If they, if they, if they wanted to make this fair, oh, we need to find a way to create more clear cut chances. What I'm thinking, what I noticed from that match is that we probably should have started more aggressive with our tactic than we did. That's what I'm picking up from that match. We probably should have started more aggressive than we did. Madsen, thank you for the five gifted subs. After Kamara, thank you for the 19 months. Glad you're able to catch another stream. I'm Kay, thank you for the 33 months. We chilled for a bit. We played two matches in the stream so far. And um, we had the lead against Adelanto, then blew it. And then we had that draw against Stadrade. So, yeah, we're not uh, we're not covering ourselves in glory here. Yoram, thank you for the 11 months. But Madsen, thank you for making five people's days. If you got one of those, AK, Yonoro, Polaban, dumb, boring dad. I don't think you're boring. Theo. Enjoy your ad-free experience for a whole month. Be sure to uh, say thank you. Show your manners. I enjoyed the Sunderland video. I did not enjoy the Sunderland, Sunderland situation. Yeah. No, it, it's not a good situation for Sunderland. Well, the manager, the manager of Sunderland that they just fired had an alt account. Although I think it's being blown a little bit out of proportion. I'm aware I'm probably contributing to that. Um... He had, a, he had an old Twitter account, basically, where he was attempting to defend his actions as the manager. All side seek Rual deal. Hey, you start showing up with like 25, 30 million for Anthony Rual, we can have a conversation. So I've got four clone center backs. So if anyone, you know, I have three clone center backs and Stoyan Alexov, who I've decided is going to start every match for me at right center back now. If you hadn't noticed, that dude's getting a run. The teenager from uh, Serbia. We need a bit more defensive ability on our defense, which is kind of a funny thing to point out that you need, but we do need it. Away against Mets. Okay. You still hate me? Yeah? All right. Good talk. Uh, Maxime Rodier was this tomorrow. Yeah. Maxime Rodier, Louise, me, Andre Gomez. Yes. Those three guys would be great. Ooh. We might have some serious movement in January with the kind of interest that's being flashed around. Shelter up is still getting better. Just inarguably the best player on the team, it would seem. All right. <sighs> my, 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 uh, like, I don't know who Gary Rowett is, but Michael Beal was hilarious. Bula, thank you for the prime, dude. Thanks for supporting the stream with $5 of Jeff Bezos' money. Enjoy the lack of ads. Where's the Sunderland video people are talking about? It's on the Zealandism YouTube channel. Only the really cool kids know about Zealandism. All right, uh, maybe this. I'm actually feeling this. We're on the road, maybe a little tentative. I think Warren Bondo needs to get out on the field, so we'll play him instead of Shelter up, uh, at least initially here. Rodier, he has no match sharpness, so I'm going to let Rodier run a full 90 with the second team, and then he'll be ready for the next match. Freaking shame that dude's just never ready. Uh, Rual. All right, Kia Rodia, I've iced you since your previous poor performance. Um, we'll go ahead and get Kia Rodia another go. Montiel, you're out. Jacques Ecomier is in. He's been better than you. Full stop. How is Pedro Bravo not fully match sharp also? This is getting ridiculous. Criticize recent form. Uh, keep working hard to improve, dude. You're, you're you know... Keep working hard to improve, Arnu. 
Okay, we'll start. The reason I'm going to start this way is they're in a 4-4-2, which can be a little tricky for our, uh, our more offensive tactic to play against. So if we can grab an early goal, we're just going to stay in this all night. If we don't, we'll obviously shift forward towards the end of the match. But I think we're going to be able to defend them much better out of this tactic. Obviously, this is a better defensive tactic. But that's where we're at. All right. Away against Mets. This is the match we had to reschedule because we had too many people gone in the international break. We are currently just in the European positions in seventh, as long as the Coupe de France winner is in the top seven, which obviously we're going to hope to win that tournament anyways, which would guarantee a European spot. But we're hunting Champions League. We're hunting that top three, which gives you an automatic trip into the Champions League league stage, which we are currently wasting. But... <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're, you know, if we do that again, our reputation continues to go up as a club. And I literally can't get any other job for whatever reason, so. I will do it here. All right, Kiarodia. There, uh, that's the sort of nonsense we want. Look at this. Look at, look. Oh, my. Yo. Martins is not a dribbler either, so I think he just caught them by surprise when he went after that. That's a deep-lying playmaker, too. Just going against every, you know, every bone in his body to make that run and nearly score it. Oh, nice play by Martins. Bravo, nice pass. Torres. Oh, it's Joel Indala. He's got the speed. Indala! Ah, yeah, yeah. Dang it, man. Oh, they timed that up. Big save by Kovacevic. How are we getting hit like that with drop off more on a lower back line, guys? They timed that up so well. I do want to see if I, if I may. Did that come from the... Oh, that came from the center back. That's tough to slow down. That's really impressive. All the way back to front. Schumacher. Always nervous when he has to pass. Oh, you know, we're never scoring that. But at least Schumacher connected on consecutive passes. Love the highlights we're getting, boys. Oh, Indala. Great. To oh, Indala. He's feeling dangerous today. Ramsey, Torres, that is so good. That is so freaking good. That is so freaking good. Wow. Inch perfect on those three passes. Bingo, bango, bongos. Joel Indala is able to advance the ball because he's just really good at that. Then Ramsey, then Torres, who's a brilliant passer. That inch of separation with the agility and the finishing of Jan Schumacher. Able to flick that ball on target. That is so freaking good. Let's go, man. Let's freaking go. That's what I wanted. I didn't want to have to leave this tactic. Because unless their center back is going to be hitting excellent through balls all game, we should be okay out of this tactic against a 4-4-2. I don't like that. Why are we? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Oh, yes, that's my ball. Just wait for the mistake. Schumacher, I have to be some individual effort here. Okay. Indala, still. Oh, what a play by Joel Indala! Oh, yes! It's Saint Etienne! Oh, my dude. He has really earned his spot in the starting 11 now. Draws two defenders, slips it to Torres, who's a very good finisher. Deposits that one in the corner like the bank is open on Sunday. Holy. Rax, thank you for the prime. This is good. This is good. This is what we need. Playing well out of our deeper tactic. Is this even the football manager I know and love?
Santa Dram, thank you for the six months, dude. I appreciate you supporting the stream. Do -do. Congrats on your silver bacon also. That should be ours. Thank you, Kirodia. Alrighty, Martin's hunting the ball. We love that from a playmaker. Running towards the ball. Dude, just get the ball to Indala. This guy cannot stay anywhere near him. The guy can't stay anywhere near Indala. Indala has the Holy Trinity, and he's a freak athlete. All you need out there. Fodiatis, thank you for the 11 months. Ranks, thank you for the 15 months. Thank you, my dudes. I appreciate you. Ramsey, oh, yo. Yes, Martins, have it. Oh, don't. Never mind, I was joking. Because this is what we want. Turn. Oh, Ramsey, get it back to him. We want to feed the beast as much as we can today. Because he is on. Indala, all oh, the chip. Oh, it's Ekomier. Oh, y'all. Yeah, no, the, the, the bacon is not just like an America joke. It's, uh, it's pure Zealand lore. Oh, bravo. Well, at least you're a good tackler. Be a really nice three points for us to pick up here. We're doing well getting shots away. Keep getting shots away out of this deeper tactic. We're going to have a really nice match. And we can rest Shelter up the whole 90 minutes. That would be awesome. The real trinity is pace, acceleration, and uh, dribbling. No, for real, though. The, what I'm, the holy trinity is like the advanced forward holy trinity, which is dribbling, first touch, and uh, finishing. Oh, get out of here. Like, you need that to be a good advanced forward. But what Joel and Dalla has is he has those he has those three, right? Dribbling, finishing, first touch are all at least fourteen, and he's a good athlete. That like, this is my ideal winger. <laughs> that's that's my ideal winger. If he gets in a goal scoring spot, he can finish. He has good ball control. He's a very good athlete. He also has some pretty good crossing. Unnecessary back heel there from Calvin Ramsey. All right, Ecomier, Bondo. That's annoying. Schumacher did a great job of just throwing himself at that so that we could win the ball. And now it's Jan. Oh, and it's still Jan. That's the worst pass he could have made because Pedro Bravo couldn't have finished that if he was two feet in front of an empty net. Not Pedro's fault. He's out there for defense. All right, let's see if we can tr find somebody else that can succeed over here on the left wing. Because we got Bondo just picked up a knock, but I don't want to run Shelter up unless we have to. Uh, what if we dropped Ekomier, moved Kiarodia out to the left side, and brought in Anthony Ruol so our defense was even better? Because Ekomier is not playing well. What if? Hear me out, guys. Part of our dominant performance over Mets that we're dropping right now. Yeah, we're about to be two points off Champions League. That's what I'm freaking talking about. That is what I'm freaking talking about. Oh, get it. Oh, it was a meh first touch. He got caught up too. Dolphin, thank you for the year. Appreciate you supporting the stream for an entire year. Congrats on the golden bacon. Cheers to the next. Now, we've won four of our last five league games if we can finish this off. Um, and the other one would be, oh, that'll help. The other one would be that draw against Stad Rene, who's second in the league right now, and we really were better than them. So, yeah, we found our cohesion. We found our confidence as a team. That's been really, really helpful. Um, so, who's tired and has full match sharpness? So, Bravo, Martins. We could just go Espar as well. So I'm going to go Sforza, Branco, and then Xavi, Espar. I know you guys are complacent, but we have a tired midfield who are all entirely match sharp. So if you could lock in here, help us end this match on top of the clean sheet. 
I don't like paying clean sheet bonuses, but also the board's getting mad at me for not playing defensively sound enough. So we could solve that problem. That'd be great. The board is getting upset with me. Wait, I sacrificed Adler to the FM gods to be able to get back into Champions League. What, you, what, did, what happened to Adler? Oh, no, it's blocked. True, we need to update the Champions League uh, thing. This is the type of performance that we are really just out here hoping for, dude. I mean, this was complete control and dominance, a comfortable win. Used it our squad. Shelter up didn't even start the match on the road. Mid-table opponent. Weren't even stomping a team in the relegation zone. That is a wonderful result. That puts us in position to be in position. We are there now. Rest in peace, Adler. What, what happened to Adler? I think pretty last I checked, he's editing right up there. Dang it, Leon won in the 96th minute against Claremont Foot. That's so annoying. So we're three points off of Champions League spots, five points off of the, the safe Champions League group stage spot. You love and love behind. Ah, Leverkusen at home. I see you. Okay, we need the Wednesday Sunday formats. Awesome. Oh, do we? Oh, come on, dude. Oh, F's in the chat for Adler. I saw the F's. I thought Twitch had gone down. <laughs> Oh, he's editing up there in heaven. True, he's editing up there in heaven. I I thought the stream had gone down. I just got just I just got baited by chat so hard. I saw the F's and I was like, oh dang it, man, the stream. Cause Twitch was having issues earlier. He should have never been editing next to that speed train. It's true. Lesson learned. Never edit next to a speed train. Majid Leonardson. You don't even have five-star potential. You're trying to sell this guy to me. And he doesn't even have five-star potential. I mean, come on. You get real with me now. We got to get so serious now. Who else is in the Champions League group? Uh, yeah, Champions League isn't groups. It's a league stage. Oh, my God, Rodier. What the hell? That's three straight. Bro, it's the whole year. Pulled groin in July. October, we kick it off with a twisted ankle. Tight calf into pulled ankle ligaments in November. December, we're rocking twisted ankle. You were like top five wonder kids in the world, okay? I would like for you to be able to play at some point this season. He will now be gone until after the winter break. Unbelievable. Time for amputation? Seriously, can we wrap him in bubble wrap and stick him out there? Like, good gracious, man. I played him in one reserve match, and he's out for a month again. All right. Looking like we're going to have a pretty decent youth intake. That's lovely to see. Uh, Juan Diaz has taken the Monaco hot seat from uh, Girona after three years managing at Girona. So they got a pretty decent coach. Do, 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 do. Liam Paget. Stéphane Giniste. Ah, he's only getting paid a million and a half already at PSG. 
Dude's got a tough life out there. Um, Anis Puel. Careful with that pronunciation. Anis. Don't lean into the A as much. You know, that'll really mess it up. You know what, Anis? Like a jobs, please? Uh, yeah, but the, the problem is most of the jobs that are out there, we're really looking for that monster job. This is our launching pad into our that monster job. It's still just Stuttgart. That's the only job that really appeals to us. But it doesn't. Because they're not in Europe, and they're only a half-star more reputation than us. And as long as we stay on the course run right now, we'll have that four-star reputation at St. at the end next year. Oh, nice! In our winding career, we have reached 300 games as a head coach. Wow. I was thinking of these like the spice. You're lucky. Value and treasure your brain. Uh, who is that? Oh, yeah, coach. They do. Away to Strasbourg. Boys, we're going to Germany. How's the Cape Verdean from Knock doing? He's at an 83 million release clause. He's still at... Hamburg, right? I think. Uh, Hoffenheim, sorry. Blue H, wrong blue H. He's at Hoffenheim. Nasser Larabi. Dude, can I get one of these guys through my youth intake? Seriously. Shindong Wookie. All right. I mean, in France, there's just all these, you know, all these amazing players just knocking around in everybody's youth intake. If I could just get one of those. Zealand is Zealand reversing World War II. That was almost a joke to myself because Strasbourg always is like Strasbourg just always sounded German to me. And so I did used to get confused. I'm like, I feel like that's a German city playing in France. But it's, it's Alsace Lorraine, you know, that complicated border territory. All right, we've got Leverkusen coming up uh, right after this, homies. So we're going to maybe rotate a little bit. We know Stoyan Alexov has played a couple matches in a row, so we're going to go Rual Karodia. Please don't make me regret that. The Tottenham job just opened up. Well, my attention is now drawn. Perhaps we would like a move to Tottenham. Bravo, Torres. We're going to need Bravo for that next match, so maybe we go with a Branko Vanden Bowman shout. Martins can apparently just play every match until the end of time. That dude's invincible. He just plays and plays. How is Joel Indala not sharp? It's insane that he's not match sharp. That dude started like four straight matches. Get your match sharpness, man. What are you doing? Oh, I need Xavi Espar to start because he's not eligible for Champions League. Shelter up or does have to rest for the two days that we're not playing because we don't have anybody else that would, like, make sense in that spot. Okay, Strasburg, how you doing? You're playing a little 4-3-3 action. We're going to start in this tactic because it worked so well last time, but um, we'll try it out as a positive tactic. You know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Let's see. Branko Vanden Bowman gets himself into the team all of a sudden.
away at Strasbourg. We'll, we'll contemplate the Tottenham situation later. Right right now, we just got to get, we, we've won four of our last, we have, you know, four wins and a draw in our last five in the league. We've put ourselves in a, a really solid position to pursue European glory once again. And we're doing, we're getting this run together while we're fumbling Champions League league stage. But we have a monster match against Leverkusen coming up in three days. So if we can get an earlier lead here, and then I can, like, sub guys at 60 to rest them. That would be huge. Because we're on three points in five matches. Leverkusen's on two points in five matches, which means we're two teams that are desperate for three points so that we can get into the top 24 in the Champions League. Dude. All right. That was fun. Real fun first couple of minutes, guys. Let's uh, turn it around now. Thank you. We are getting a lot of the ball, which is great. And we have turned the momentum graph, which is great. They just had a really bright start. Our new. You're not that guy, buddy. Trust me. The only goals you score on back post cross is because you are tall, but you are not that guy. Oh, this would be a gift. We have struggled on set pieces, to say the least. Okay, Stefan Negru. I need to add in the back post and the short. I, I don't think we have enough variety in our set piece stuff. Why is Shelter up already in a 6.5? What have we done to the world? Oh, our new just spawned in to give the ball away in a better position for them. How, how do you manage... To take the ball away and yet somehow give them a better spot than they were in before. Like, great interception. Thank you, Kovacevic. Dave, thank you for the 48 months, dude. Thank you so much for supporting the stream. Chaps, thank you for the six months. Four years is freaking crazy, Dave. Four years is crazy. Chaps, thank you. He's a double agent. He friggin' looks like it right now. He's lost his starting spot to Joel Indala, and he looks very undetermined to get it back. Well done controlling possession. Now we go with what I like to call the tactical ambush. That's so not what I wanted to happen. Um, that's what I wanted to happen. I just did that such the wrong way but who even cares man we're gonna come out of the half and they're gonna be like what just happened why are they all of a sudden incredibly aggressive I always was i always was incredibly aggressive uh do we need to change our personnel i don't think so not yet although i am you know we're looking at it we're considering all possibilities 3z jr thank you so much for the prime and the bacon. Enjoy your lack of ads, courtesy of Jeff Bezos. When will Espar get a face? He's earned it. I should give him his face. JLab is always so on top of that stuff. He's already sent it to me. Oh, we should give Espar his face. He, he's earned it. He's played well enough. Nice. We get Martins in a pocket of space where he can try and make a play. Our new. One thing. I want you to do one thing right today, Arnu. I don't care what it is. It can be anything. Oh. All right. I have changed... Our set piece tactics to allow for a little variety because we're just not scoring on them at all right now. And he's still, we still went with the near post, which we're going to do like, I think, 50% of the time. We've also added in a short option. Oh, Xavi Espar. No, any of, oh, wide. No, look at Montiel, dude. 
He was so alone. Branko. Oh, great ball by Branko. Once again, Arnu doing nothing right. How is his match rating higher than Shelderup's? Jim, thank you for the three months. Loving the streams. Keep up the good work. I love you. Oh, no. Don't like it. Oh, that was scary. Branko. It's fun to have Vanden Bowman out there. I know he's getting old, but still do a job in the defensive midfield spots. Arnu. Oh, my goodness. That was pretty good. Shelter up! Goal! Yes! It's Andreas Shelter up! And somehow it was Nico Arnu that made it happen. He put it in the mixer. The keeper cleared it away. It goes to Shelter up, who keeps his feet. That's a harder shot than he made it look. To get to that ball, running away from it, and drill it at the empty net, avoid the defenders. Superbly, supremely done. And we're actually getting a good performance from Montiel, which is, like, so rare. I'm going to bring in Ruol for Kirodia. We don't need that whole playing with the ball nonsense. That vibe that he brings. Um, I'm going to go Sforza for Torres as well. Does Sforza have any goal-scoring ability? He does. I should use him as a 10 maybe uh, a little more when we're in a pinch. But he's somebody that can finish off a move with that left foot of his. Ooh, play it short. Please, Vanden Bowman. He's not going to. He's going for a goal. I can smell it. Arnu is persistent, if anything. He really has got that Darwin kind of vibe. Except he doesn't score the bangers also. Wait, I forgot. Oh, my God. That was so bad. Ah, yeah. So the new set pieces, guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, we introduced a new short corner at halftime. Didn't go well. Um, which was sick. We love that. Uh, all right. Now, which corner are we running? There we go. That's what I wanted. Yes. Shelter up. That's better though. That's a better looking set piece than we've been running. Uh, all right. This one is far post. So Branko is going to bend it like Beckham over. Oh no, this is a short one. Again, we just ran the short corner twice. He was very off. Yeah. That was stupid. Okay. Um, Let's take this party back to uh, where, it, where it belongs. All right, guys, 10 minutes left. We're shifting into our sound formation. We are not obviously fully comfortable, but we are able to bring in Bravo here. So we're going to have our excellent ball winner in to help see this out. I'm also going to go with Joel and Dalla for shelter up. Just to give us that speed on the break. Um, Mino. Montiel, I did like the way you played, but Echo Mie is way taller than you. So we're going to bring him in so that he can help cover up those back post crosses. My hands are cold. And I'm on my knees. Oh, Sforza. Oh, it's our new. With acres of space. Nico. Oh. <laughs> He's actually doing things. Branko! Oh, man. Nice. My goodness. Are those consecutive clean sheets I smell? Do I smell consecutive clean sheets? Oh, I think I do. How do you like that defense, board? Clean sheet wins on the road. That defense all right, board, or are you, are you still not satisfied with that? That's a good win. All right, now we have the massive Champions League match against Bayer Leverkusen. <sighs> you better hope that's what you smell, that or we were about to get FM'd into the stratosphere. Then I'm on my knees. We are now in fifth. A humble eight points. 
off the top of the league with Saint Etienne running away from the likes of Monaco and Marseille. Strasbourg, of course. Claremont Foots literally in last. They played Montpellier today and Montpellier won. Claremont Foots' only win is still us. I can't tell you how much that bothers me. The fact that I track it literally every match day, waiting for them to get a win over literally anyone so that we are not the only loss. But right now we uh, we are. We are the only loss. All right, two days of rest for you and Joe Martins. Uh, everybody else will be okay. The only win for Claremont Foot all season. 1-0 at home against St. Etienne. Oh, all right, guys. We have to win this match. Oh, this Purge job. Right, 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 right. They're in 11th. They finished in 6th last year, which means they are in the Europa League uh, group phase thing, and they are 5 played. So how much money you got? Yeah, that'll do. Holy hell, dude. They have so much money. 390 million is their payroll. They're in 11th in the Premier League. It's Villarreal open too. I just I went right to the that job. Hold on. So you obviously probably won't be able to get that job based off everything else is gone. We'll try, but we probably won't be able to get it. Uh, is there any other job we'd want? Villarreal's in 13th. Where'd they finish last year? Oh, hell yeah. Six. They're in Europa League too. They're having a mare. Um, they are a four-star club. Uh, you know... I we're, we're we can spend eighty two million and we're in the Champions League and we're definitely not in thirteenth in our league right now. I don't I don't know if that's the job we'd want to move to. I'm gonna say no. And then Stuttgart's not in Europe at all, so that's not a job we want to move to either. Uh, that job's been up there a while. Stuttgart, I don't think, had... Uh, yeah, Stuttgart has the same amount of money that we have. But we'll be a four-star reputation team after this season. So it's not like we're not... Um, we're not far away from the level of those teams right now. Tottenham is obviously a jump up. It's a full-star reputation above where we are right now. And the amount of money that they have available to spend on wages is just preposterous. It's impossible to imagine considering, you know, where we're at right now. And they, I mean, Tottenham has every opportunity to win the Europa League as well. Like, there's there's nothing stopping Tottenham from winning the Europa League. Except maybe the name. <sighs> oh, it's my 100th, dude, I just played my 300th overall match. And now I'm managing my 100th match in charge of the green monster Saint at the end. All right, th 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 this this is the match, dude. This is the match where if we hang three points on this match, we can slip into that knockout round. If we don't, the next match is literally Liverpool away, and then we have Porto at home. This is the easiest of the three matches we have left. The bar right now is five points. So a win is an absolute must. A win is an absolute must. Because we're probably going to need something else on top of just those three points. We'll see. I mean, there's so many different variables that go into it. But a win is a must. Oh, Coupe de France draw. Right. That's the beginning of January. We play a team from the fourth division. Cool. Glanville, I believe, was the team. So they're a good team in the fourth division. Oh, no. We got Stade Bordelais. Okay. Cool.
That'll be coming out of the winter break, January 1st, New Year's Day. We're back to training, boys. We've got a match. Yeah, I'm aware of the Coupe de France selection criteria. Thank you for ruining my day. Wait, Kenya just beat South Africa at the AFCON? What the hell's going on? Oh, that was a group stage match? Okay. Cameroon and Mali are through. Burkina Faso finishing third. Very normal. This is very not normal. Guinea-Bissau just won the group with wins over Egypt and Mozambique. So we are going to get Lorenzo Sage back. He's already done. They've been eliminated. Uh, Egypt's in third. They'll probably go through. Ivory Coast, South Africa are going through automatically, but Kenya got a win, and then they still got knocked out on goals for by Guinea. Yikes. Guinea's in third. They might not go through either. Nothing weird down through the rest of it. But Lorenzo Sage is about to come back. He's already back. That's awesome. Lorenzo Sage is already back. I must be in heaven. Hey, Brango, can you talk to Ramsey? You guys have been here a while. No? Okay. A contract doesn't really reflect the player that I've become. Calvin, what do you want? Dude, this is like just a contract extension for almost the same amount of money. Oh, okay, that's why. Kind of sent it on that one, but he's gonna he's gonna get a little bit more money. It's fair. Okay. Fine, we'll give you a new contract. Same playing time. Nothing nothing weird, Calvin. Nothing weird. Nothing weird. Our recruitment focuses on this MM cap to 20 recommendations. I don't think so. Can you my country? We suck. Hey, dude, you just won a match at AFCON against our boys from South Africa. I wouldn't know. Uh, yeah, I'm not talking down to you right now. That's a big time dub. I know because we got some of the guys on that South African team and they are pretty freaking good. Feed from. Hello, Leverkusen. How are you doing today? God, we need to win this match, dude. We need to win. Oh, if we win this match, it's going to be a really exciting final two matches. But we need to win. Oh, Sage is back, but he's tired. Okay. Stoyan Alexov steps in for Stefan Negru. Uh, right back is going to be Ramsey, obviously. Okay. It's quite the bench I've got here. Um, let's go with Joel Indala as well. We're not going Branco. We're going Bravo. So it's Bravo, Torres, Martin, Zendala, Shelley, Schumacher. Ramsey, Alexov, Kierodia, Montiel, which, uh, yeah, I mean, that's our only option because Diara's on international duty, which he's with Molly, right? And they're, they're into the next round, so he's playing knockouts, which means he will be gone for until after the winter break. We can do this, boys. We can do this. We have four one-goal losses in the Champions League. We need this three points right here. We need it now. There is no more time to mess around. We freaking need it. I'm going to add in some uh, routines. I'm going to do a far post and swinger. And then I'm going to go with a an in-swinging short. Where we don't have somebody come short. We have three lurking outside the area. And we're going to go to our, our routine frequency, and we're going to go with the short uh, in swing. Oh, I, I accidentally met. I literally put it backwards last time. I'm just an idiot. Uh, so near post, 50%, 30%, 20%. Basically the way I think about it. 
Um, 35%, 15%, something like that. Uh, okay. Yes. Because we have Bravo in there, so we want to go for him, but we want to have a more variety in our set pieces. All right. Set pieces are ready. Champions League Knights at St. Etienne. It's an absolutely beautiful spectacle here in France. A club that two seasons ago was wallowing in the French second division and now walks out against Bayer Leverkusen and a massive six-pointer to get into the playoff round of the Champions League. St. Etienne's been hard done by its luck. Four one-goal defeats in a row in the Champions League competitions. While Bayer Leverkusen are coming off their first win of Champions League play against RB Salzburg. St. Etienne's win at Olympiakos to open its Champions League campaign. Come on, boys. Come on. We need this. We need these three points. We've messed around enough. Santiago Montiel. Shelley. Torres! Oh, how does he save that? Get that out of here. There you go, Montiel. Oh my. It's every single match in the Champions League, bro. It's every single match in the Champions League we do something stupid. I mean, what is this? Every single Champions League match is like dead even. And then it's just one stupid thing that decides it. It's been Kiarodia the last two times. I mean, this match has been dead even. There's nothing in it. We take that away easily, and then what is that? I didn't know that hit the wall at all. All right, we have um, 
Real bad performance from Kia Rodeo. There's nobody we can bring in from Montiel, but he's in a 6.3. I don't think he should be blamed for that goal, though. That was all just Kia Rodeo. Just, I don't know what he's doing. Montiel, well, I, I don't think it was a bad idea to pass it back to him in that situation. Uh, we, we, we need two goals in all likelihood uh, for our Champions League future. So we're going to try and ambush them the same way we pulled this out in other matches. Um, we're going to shift into this position. Uh, eyes on potential substitutions early in the second half, obviously. But we are going to ride with this here for a sec. Okay, I said early in the second half, nothing's going. Um, we need to make some changes. Dude, the guys we don't have subs for are the guys that aren't playing well. Almost to a man. Every single player we don't have a sub for is not playing well. That's annoying. Um, this Forza. Oh, no, I'm doing the right thing. Okay. thought I was adjusting the wrong tactic there for a second. All right, I'm bringing in Sage. I'm bringing in Bondo. I'm moving Shelter up to Striker. Um, just get quality out there uh, in Dallas. We, we have one more sub. And um, I, I don't really know where to use it, to be entirely honest with you. We're, we're just not doing anything. There isn't a thing happening in this match. They have two shots the whole game, but we can't get them off the ball. Here we go. Sforza. Oh, my goodness, Bondo. Immediate impact from the subs. Warren Bondo to Lorenzo Sage. Thank goodness Mozambique got knocked out of AFCON. Oh, baby, let's go. We're pushing. We're pushing for the win. We're pushing for the win. That was a sweaty goal there, but Warren Bondo continues to just make plays. Great pass by Sforza. Squares it for Lorenzo Sage, who just got back from AFCON. Like, he's still tired from AFCON with Mozambique, but he's able to finish it off. Come on. Come on now. Chase that win. Chase that win. Chase that win. We just snap this game wide open. Chase the dub. We have one more sub. I'm looking. I'm looking. Nico Arnu. Yes. Nico Arnu. Yes. This is your moment, Nico. This is your moment. And is tired. He hasn't done much this match. It's all you, Nico. Come on, boys. Get on this ball. Get on this ball. Okay. And we shift. Shape's actually been fine. We're there. Montiel, way to defend. Don't say that often. Oh, that went right through him. Uh, good hold. Good hold. All right, I'm going all out for it. I'm going all out for it. We're, we're... 
Where, oh, dang it. The change was up in the top left for a couple of secs there. Uh, a couple of seconds. Okay. Uh, Sforza's there. We're going for it. We have to, we need to win. We need it. So you need to anchor. You need to stay back. You can't get, you can't float too far forward. Shift! Uh, we just got that uh, shift in. Good goalkeeping. All right. We got our change in. We're absolutely sending it for the dub. We actually have short goalkeeper distribution on. Oh, okay, okay, okay. They're trying to take it away. You have to be confident enough to roll it there anyways. You, we, ha we have to play out short. We cannot play out long, guys. Big play by Bondo. Terrible pass by Montiel. What are you there for if you can't help the offense? I am so over Montiel, dude. All right, Bondo, let's go. No, dude. That's our ball. That's our ball. No, what are you doing? There's nobody near you, you lemon. What are you doing? Oh my goodness, come on. Come on. Oh. Oh my goodness, Alexov. What a touch. Bondo flying in. Sage is there. This could actually be it. Remember, we've got like everybody up. He's off. He's so off. Guys, we're just wasting time here. Come on. Every, like, my grandmother knows that's offside. And she doesn't even know the rule. You just, like, I mean, good God, man. My entire team is miles off. And of course, their only decent chance, their only good moment of the game was a catastrophic error. I want one Champions League game without us making an absolutely diabolical mistake. Without us making an absolutely absurd mistake, dude. I mean, God. USA is fourth in the world rankings. We're ahead of Italy, Argentina, Spain, Germany, Belgium, Uruguay, Portugal. Way ahead of Mexico. This is awesome. I'm trying to catch England in the world rankings right now. Coaching the U.S. national team seems to be going very well. God, dude. Our final two Champions League matches are Liverpool away and then Porto at home, which we're just basically going to have to win Porto at home and then hope things go our way. Liverpool away, if we could steal a point, that'd be amazing. That's going to be really tough. But we're going to we're gonna have to win Porto at home, end on seven points, and that might be enough depending on goal difference. Our goal difference won't be bad because we've lost every match we've freaking lost has been by one goal. Two matches left. Just got to keep battling. That's a real shame that we didn't win that match. That would have put us in a pretty good spot.
Uh. Sabretooth, thank you for the nine months. We don't really need to tank. The rotation has not been that difficult on our team. Like it, it, it's not as grueling as we, we even even though we're playing Champions League, we still get like weeks off that reset fitness. So it's not nearly as grueling as playing in England where you don't get that. Because you have, you know, other competitions kind of taking up that time. We should really have almost finished all of the scouting that I told our guys to do. Uh, my guess would be we're under like 200 people now. I don't know, look. All right. Atmosphere's good. Cohesion's good. Champions League's been rough. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're down to 106 people. We were at 750 people on our scouting priorities. Our scouts are getting paid overtime. They have put in some crazy work. Yeah, it says 15 players are unhappy. They they just aren't. That's just like a glitch. Um we you know, if you go to happiness, uh even if you no matter how you're measuring that, we've got Calvin Ramsey wants a new deal which we are currently giving him. I uh, Shelter Up's had the sale thing for a while. We've got two playing time concerns from Sage and Negro. Uh but there yeah, no there's nothing crazy in there at all. Certainly not uh 20 or 15 people or whatever. Fortunately, that glitch is just a visual text glitch. It's not actually affecting our locker room atmosphere at all. We're completely fine. Uh, no, you gotta let me out. Valencian goalkeeper Daniel Lesor. That is a very good goalkeeper. We're signing him. We're signing him tomorrow. We forgot to remove the loan back length. Apparently they want him to be there the rest of the season and a whole bunch of other stuff. So looks like it's going to be more like 4 million instead of 400,000, but that's fair. Ah, uh, Marseille, you always get to play on Fridays, and yet, you are bad. Oh, he trained at a 7.05. I didn't read. Yeah, dude, your training's been fine. Madsen, thank you for the five gifted subs. That's 10 gifted subs for Madsen today. Show some love to Madsen for giving people the ad-free experience. Enjoy the lack of ads. Enjoy the bacon. Enjoy the emotes. Enjoy being part of an elite online gaming community. Hello, Tottenham. Hi. Hello, Tottenham. How are you doing, Tottenham? Madsen knows well. Madsen, thank you for the 10 gifted subs, dude. Thank you guys for the nearly 2,800 hammers on the face of the earth. That's pretty crazy. All right. Hi, Daniel. I've heard great things. Can you ease your concerns about having never managed in the country? I've experienced in various other countries. Having never managed a club of our stature and reputation, are you able to, uh, are you able to make a convincing case as to why that should be overlooked and you should be hired? Uh... I've been waiting for the right opportunity to step up to the big time. Some people might be inclined to say you're taking a risk, leaving what's considered a safe job. It's not as safe as you'd think. <laughs> Looking to make the jump to a bigger challenge. What's the thought process? Uh, just focused on trying to be the best coach I can be. How do I intend to handle the workload of bandaging both club and international? Um, they don't take up too much time. Why well, have you felt it acceptable to apply for a number of jobs in your career? It's my choice, and I stand with my decisions, you know. 
We've been performing well below expectations and are on our worst run of the season. Could you get this team back on track? I'm all about motivation. I could get it done. Um, uh, do I need more time to join the club or could I join? Yeah, I, mean, I just assume I'm happy to take charge now. Yeah. What sort of budget would you need in place? Um, probably a small budget. Our long-term vision outlines the next few years. Sign players under the age of 23, play possession, do not sign players the age of 30, high tempo, develop players using the club's youth system, work within the payroll budget. I mean, the payroll budget's like $400 million, so pretty sure I could do that. Uh, win the Europa... Oh, well, damn. <laughs> win the Europa League, finish top half of the Prem. Literally win the Europa League. Okay, yeah, I could do that. Top half finish. Um... Let me look at the Prem real quick. How far away are we? Only four points. Five points. Uh, hmm. Yeah, game in hand, so you win that, you're at 22, you're kind of, yeah, I think, I, you know what? Oh, dude, there's a board meeting option? Good Lord. I think I could get us into Europa League, yeah. The transfer budget is $68 million. Um, I'm okay with that. Payroll, but that's a little lower than you advertised, Daniel. Still way more than what I have. I'm happy to work with that. That would be a challenge. That would be a really serious challenge. I don't know how I just found that, but apparently there's an option to go back into the board meeting from there. Uh, so this might be our last... I mean, look. We've been... How many... What are, who are the clubs that have rejected us in the past calendar year after an interview? Uh, Arsenal didn't even give us an interview. Bayern, Dortmund, Lens, Lazio. Was that it, or is there, am I missing one more? Those are all of the uh, clubs that rejected us. Oh, Leipzig. Leipzig also rejected us. So I knew I was missing one. So we've had a lot of interviews and we have uh, we we've been rejected after a lot of those interviews. Unfortunately. So just because we had the interview does not mean we are gonna get the job. Is what I'm saying. Oh, we're probably not the favorite. Those Premier League clubs are hiring ridiculous managers. We, I, I am, you know, we, they didn't offer us the job. They graciously gave us an interview. The Newcastle coach, Arnie Slot, is the betting house, is the betting favorite on the house. Oh, Villarreal have actually reached out to us, which is interesting because we, um, we're just looking at them and thinking, wow, that's, but you know, they're, uh, what is that? Six points out of fifth place. They are also, of course, in the Europa League. It's getting hot spur in here. Thank you for the 21 months, dude. Thank you for supporting the stream. Yuspe, thank you for the 32 months. You may have heard about Karl Marx, but his sister Anya was also a world-famous runner. In fact, her name is still set at the start of every race. Anya Marx. Right.
We were, I mean, we, I know we were looking at this uh, when we came over here, but I don't know if this job is, that was a good job. I don't know if this job is the type of job we'd want to jump to. I'll see what kind of transfer budget they have. I'll do the interview. If you're that interested in me, Jose, I'll do the interview. Really adept at learning new languages. Um, I've managed in a bunch of other countries. What do you think makes you suited to managing a club of this stature? Building up experience. International commitments don't take up too much time. I'm a motivator. I'm going to turn the club around. Um, I take charge now. Am I comfortable with the general manager? Yeah, he's good. I'm happy to work with him. Coaching staff, uh, significant. Club's vision would be, where do you want me to finish? We have a bunch of contract rules. Latter stages of the Europa League and then top half. Okay, yeah, I can do that. Targeting a top half finish. Uh, could I challenge for conference? Well, now that I know I can leave, let me leave. Hold on. I want to see the roster. You know what I want to see is the stats detailed. Villarreal's seventh in salary spend. So right in the group, Associated Sevilla Athletic Club, Valencia. It's actually way behind him. So Villarreal, who's the first team? Oh, you got Moise Keen. Ignacio Gomez. Alex Baena, Ramon Tarats, Marco Bogdanovic, Joel Florentine. I don't think their team is that much better than the one that we have right now. It's Saint at the end. In fact, I feel like I know it. I their team just doesn't feel much better than um than what we have right now. You're going to have to give me a real serious uh, like wage offer. They do have Fode Bellatore. Fuck, we love Fode Bellatore. But. Board meeting. Hi. I agree. I don't know if we'd be able to... Do we only transfer budget of $6 million? Uh... I we I would need a much bigger transfer budget. I like that your wage budget is higher than what we initially told me. But in order to take over, I need a much bigger transfer budget. I'll just let them know. If they show up with like 40 million, maybe. But I don't think they will. That was that was not a great interview from our side. We were feeling them out in that interview. Not a great interview from our side. Claremont Foot's ability to continue to lose by one goal no matter who they're playing. Very impressive. All right, if we win this match, we are, uh, well, we could catch up to Lyon if they lose. We'll see. We just got to keep trying to win. This is Lorient. This is a match that we should be able to win pretty easily. Um, You know, I'm actually liking starting matches in this formation and then, like, expanding out if I want to, but we'll start positive. I'll up the tempo by one, but like we'll start positive and just play out of this formation, and that's been really nice for us. All right, Kiarodia, dude, you're giving me absolute nightmares. Let's go with Stefan Negro and just make... They're not going to press us too hard, but just make sure we have two sound defenders out there. Uh, where's Jacques Ecomier? Uh, Kiarodia, you're just getting the day off after that terrible mistake, but Ecomier is... Uh, back and available and i'm gonna start him over a tired montiel who continues to annoy me but don't really have a lot of other options same at striker where we have jan schumacher oh mocha winner's back oh yes i mean south africa got knocked out well that's not good for them but good for me mocha winner's back uh so burkina faso did go through guinea and kenya did not DR Congo, Senegal, or Wanda made it, which congratulations to them. Nigeria and Ghana were in the same group and they made it out. Morocco, Algeria, and of course Cape Verde went through. And Congo won a match and didn't advance. Beat Algeria and did not advance. 
So the tree is Cape Verde, Ivory Coast, DR Congo, Ghana, Cameroon, Angola, Algeria, Tunisia. Mali beat South Africa. So Musa Diara's team beat Mokowina's team five to three. Senegal beat Egypt seven to one. Yeah, this is the real AFCON. I know because my players were at it. Yo. Somebody come get Egypt in the round of 16. What the hell? Senegal still looking good. Nicholas Jackson had a couple of goals. Burkina Faso beat Guinea-Bissau, who had a man sent off in the 12th minute. Oh, what heart from Guinea-Bissau. They got all the way to the knockouts, tried to survive Burkina Faso, who's headed to the quarterfinal, and then Mali. Oh, it was 3-3 three, three in the 90th. They scored two in stoppage time. Well, one in the 90th and the one in the 95th. South Africa actually had a one-goal lead, a 2-1 lead, and a 3-2 lead, thanks to a goal from Bangani Kumalo, our center back, who's on loan right now at Algier. And Cameroon's beating Angola right now, so nothing crazy happening in that match. But we do have Mokowina back to at least be on the bench for this match, which is huge for us because we've really not had a substitute striker for quite a while. Okay, we're ready. Uh, they're sending Valentin Rongier up and Romain Perrault. Okay, guys, that's uh, those are the decisions today. Everybody's feeling good. Happy to have Cabello Mokowina back in the team. Last match before our two weeks off for the winter break. So let's get a good result. We've won five of our last six in the league with a draw in between. So we're in fabulous league form. I'm looking to maintain that today. Keep pushing ourselves away from Marseille and Troyes and pulling away with the rest of this top seven that seems to be running in a pack. That's what we want. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Oh, nice pass. Dude should have shot that ball earlier. I am uncomfortable with how easily we just got picked open, though. Bad boy wasn't on the South Africa AFCON team. He did play in some World Cup qualifiers, but he was not on the AFCON team. It was just uh, Mokawena and Bangani Kamala. Dude. I am not going to waste time here today. I, I am not. We just got exposed down that left side on consecutive possessions. I... Our tactics not looking good here. Echo is not looking good here. So left backs in general just not having a fun time, but we just got, you know, back-to-back -back possessions there. We just got shredded down that left side by a team that is not very good. So we're going to go out and try and flex on these guys a little bit because we just got outplayed to start this game. That was rough, but we fortunately, we planned on scoring multiple goals in this match anyways. We still have a while to do it.
Well, this is not fun. Thank you. Thank you. Let's finish that. Dang. Okay, guys. All right. You already know what I'm going to say, so do I even need to say it? Where's Bondo? I'm sure Torres hasn't been playing well. I'm sure Schumacher hasn't been playing well. I'm sure Joel Indala hasn't been playing well. So we're going to go with a nice four-man move here, and we're going to have... Uh, yeah, we might go with Sage later, but actually, yeah, let's go with Sage. We'll have Sage just be an attacking midfielder there. Bondo's going to clear out as a shadow striker. All right, you idiots. We are keeping the ball in that half of the field, so help me. We are keeping that ball in that half of the field. You got it? Four subs, uber aggressive setup. We are keeping that ball in that half of the field. These guys suck and we are putting, you know, I don't care if they score, we're scoring four goals in this half. You go right now. Bondo, Martins, this is the old Sir Alex Ferguson move. This is nonsense. Colmier, please get rid of it. Ramsey, great touch. I did, even though he didn't get there, I love that. Oh, okay. Well, didn't end up great for us, but that's that's okay. We've swapped out the entire front of the team. Dude, what is that? Apparently, it isn't going to count because of something weird, but, like, oh, come on. What a match. Uh, so, this is offside on the on that pass. Yeah, that is off. Okay. Thank goodness. Okay. There you go, Akomye. That's what we want from that pressure. Make them have to play. Stefan Negru, love the aggressiveness with his positioning. Good carry, good pass. Arnu, that's just not ever going to be a chance. I will eat my shorts if he scores that. Can you believe that we still haven't really gotten a lot of shots in this match? Can you believe that? All right, Montiel, I know I hate you, but you're a better offensive player than Ekomier, so 
Could you, uh, you get out there and make it happen for me, please? As we've played 25 minutes and not a lot has happened. And we're in a ridiculously aggressive tactic. There you go. And there you go. And here goes our new to miss the shot. Let's freaking go, boys. We are so in. It is impossible to be more aggressive than we are right now. And yet we just continue. No, I don't want to do that. We just continue to not be able to do anything with it. All right, we're even more aggressive. We are literally even more aggressive now. So let's go, boys. Saddle up. That's our ball. All right. They haven't been able to get through this at all. Come on. Three goals in a flash. I have no idea where they would come from at this point, but three goals in a flash, guys. All right, guys. Um, you got to hit the pass to Martin because if you stand there on the ball for five seconds, they will wait. Okay. Our new. Our new. He's on. Please tell me he's on. He is. Dude, I'm going to move this stream to comedy. This is insane. I've never gone for it that early in a match, and somehow the entire second half playing a tactic that looks like suicide is just, like, not nobody scored in the entire second half with me doing this. Not even them. Nothing is happening. That should be impossible. It should be impossible that nothing is happening right now. Theoretically, impossible. Physically, impossible impossible we have been in this the entire second half and nothing is happening are you serious at least have them score have the decency to show me a goal thank you Whatever their defensive tactic is smoking, I would love a puff. Yeah, it's cool, man. Let it go out. You're on a 6.2. Not like you've already contributed so much to the team today. Just let it roll. Sure, why not? Thank you, Warren Bondo. We have two minutes left. We really appreciate it. Now let's uh, go see if we can make this happen. They're both on ball playing defender already. They have been. I swapped that at like 80.
I am livid. I am absolutely livid. I'm tired of this team, dude. Get me out of here. I'm out. I'm done. I'm tired of this friggin' team. I don't know what's going on, but I'm tired of this team. I'll leave. I'm done. We're in seventh. I don't know how. I pulled a magic trick. It's one of the best managerial jobs of my life to get this team this far. One of the best managerial jobs of my life to get this team this far. Are you kidding me? That third place finish last year? Ridiculous. Going full Jose Mourinho. Yeah, you just... Oh. These guys are just bad. They, they just underperform all the time. They cannot do anything. They've got to show me something here, okay? It's our first loss in seven in the league. But our losses are so stupid, okay? We have lost to Claremont Foot, Stad Dareem, and Lorient away. Grow a pair and play on the road, all right? Stop folding in on yourself like a dying star. There is a plague in this house, and if I am here for another year, I will get rid of it. It's Montiel, it's Shelter up, and his random ass 6.2s that pop up all over the place. We are getting those guys out of the freaking team, and we are building a team of people that know how to perform against Claremont Foot. We started that match in the 4 4 or in the 4 3 3. We started that match in the 4 3 3, dude. We're underscoring our XG like it's a job. Jan Schumacher sucks, and we need to get rid of him. Jan Schumacher is small and can't pass, and he needs to leave. Oh, we have uh, March friendlies are open. Okay. We got nothing going on in March. That's World Cup build up, so we'll book some good friendlies there, but we need to continue a day. Ugh. Kiarodi is a plague. I don't know what the hell's wrong with Kiarodi because his attributes are great, but he has been a disaster. Well, that sucks. Uh, that Yeah, he's on loan. This isn't like a guy on our team right now. But Bangani Kumala has been with us for a while. Send him to a specialist. Recall him from loan. He's not going to play the rest of the year. That's a brutal eight. Damaged his spine. So he's done for the rest of the year. Just got back to Auger after AFCON. Good to bring him back. Have our uh, physicians work on him. When he's not with the specialist, I suppose. Man, these dudes, these dudes are bad. We need new dudes. We'll squeeze as much out of them as we can, and we have done that. We were on a six-match unbeaten streak with five wins going into that match, but you cannot be laying eggs against Lorient and Claremont Foot and Stade Dream. You can't do it. Cannot be laying those eggs. All right, I get a couple weeks off. Hey, Christopher Scott's playing for playing and scoring for Ghana, which is nice. Go him. Did I have a Spurs interview? Yeah, I interviewed with Spurs. Uh, I'm going to roll me in a rat. 
We are fourth in the world, dude. He's impressed by their generally decent reputation within the game. We're fourth in the world, Nathaniel. Nathaniel Brown, we are fourth in the world with the U.S. right now. Whatever. I had range friendlies. Uh, okay, nobody. Uh, Poland. Cote d'Ivoire. Nice. Poland. Doesn't count towards our world ranking. Okay. Six from 12 counts towards our world ranking, though, and those are two matches I think we could win also. Just got to, you know, do my, do my duty. How bad was that loss for our morale? Yeah, I know. I was just thinking of the goalkeeper. Not terrible. Nobody wants you for 55 million, bro. Nobody wants you. Yanis, please, dear God, say yes. All right. Uh, the young guy, Daniel Lesson, whatever. Uh, Daniel Lesson, your. I did. It's really, really, uh, really good young 18 year old goalkeeper. Has tremendous size, good one on ones, reflexes are already all in place. Well, that's Yanis. He still doesn't like us. Well, Senor, at least, he likes us. I think he might actually play in the first team this year, depending on what happens, so no. He has a chance to be our number two goalkeeper and maybe even push for number one goalkeeper. Yanis Constantelius, I want that dude so badly. Now that I am fully convinced that we need another we need another dude to achieve what we want to achieve. I want that guy so much. I want him so much. I love Constantelius. Wait, Leverkusen's drawing right now? Well, that's an exciting first 9 minutes. I mean, being level 9 minutes in isn't wild, but having scored and then having it No, damn it. I'm trapped in a dude that guy is a star player in the Greek league and he still doesn't have enough interest to come play for us even though we're in the Champions League <sighs> oh my god we got the Tottenham job That's it. We just got it. They saw me bottle that last match and they were like, yo, let me tell you. I uh, technical director, even, even Braunschweilig, um, X to Bury's better. So well, how much did they give me? 13 million. So X to Bury is coming in as the new technical director. Actually, I don't want to. I don't want to bring anybody from the old staff. We should be able to sign somebody better than that. Head of youth development, Simon Davies. Uh, he's out. Coaching staff. Just to give you an idea of how often this happens. Hello. Hi, is this Elin? Oh, no. 
That's not good. That wasn't Esteban. That was my name. Oh, that's probably a very bad sign. Where's that area code from? Oh, wait a s It's very interesting. I used to uh, I I went to grad school in Syracuse, so that might have actually been like a call like at least loosely related to my like me having lived there at some point. But it I I I I don't know if it was um I tried to call them back and it was not it couldn't be completed as dialed, so it was clearly something weird. All righty kids. Oh, I have a very good set piece coach. Uh, Michael Cooper, that dude is a fitness coach of terrible proportions. This dude sucks. Head performance analyst. He's he's good. All right, Ed Physio, that dude's legit. Ed of Sports Science, that dude is... We could probably do better than that. Physio, anybody not have 20 physiotherapy? Because if so, that's embarrassing. So basically all of you. Cool. Uh, sports Scientists, 11. How the hell did you sneak in there? Dude, that Chief Scout's crazy. Yo, they've got a 2020. Holy Toledo. They have an actual 2020 scout. Jim Lawler upholding the law on the scouting trail. I'm still within my uh, budget request thing. Yep. Still within it. Okay. Um, Beautiful recruitment analyst. That 1315 guy's got to go. I'm sorry. Recruitment analysts. It's actually quite good. They're both good. Not messing around with that. Uh, loan manager. Dude is absolutely insane. All right, so that's only 9.4, so maybe if there's somebody else that we feel like we wanted to get rid of, like uh, the the goalkeeping coach. We'll eat those guys out. This is, a, this is weird, chat. This is weird. I've been at St. Etienne for 101 matches. We guided them from the second division to a Champions League finish last year. But there's been a real malaise over the team this year. There's been an ineffectualness in the team. I'm obviously partly responsible. I mean, I built this team. Um, but it it hasn't quite clicked the way we hoped this season, even though we just went on a really good run in the league. We ended it with a stupid loss at Lorient that obviously tilted me. But this is um, this is a brave new frontier. We're about to jump into a position where we're expected to finish in the top six and we're expected to win the Europa League. And if we don't do that, we're probably fired. But it's such a good opportunity that I would say we have to take it. It's a tremendous opportunity as a manager. And it allows St. Etienne to transition in the January window. They're also threatening my job, which I think is ridiculous considering how far I've brought this club. Yeah, hopefully they uh, hopefully they finalize the job soon. I got to stand up for this, chat.
Now, once they ask for coaching changes, chat, that means you've got the job. And we have been offered the job by Tottenham. Oh, my. I mean, nobody in their right mind would turn this down. You know how much I'm making right now? I'm making $700,000 a year. They're offering me $7 million a year to coach the team. I'm currently making $741,000 a year. This is a mammoth job offer. We're stepping into one of the big six. We're going to Tottenham. I'm replacing Zinedine Sedan, dude. What? Newcastle brought him out of retirement for two years, then he went to Tottenham. Yeah, all right. Sick. I wonder where he's going to end up. He's going to end up with a massive coaching job. I am replacing Zinedine Zidane at Tottenham. Have they won a trophy? Have they won? Yes! Oh, my God, they won the Prem. No, they didn't. Why does it say that they did? That's runners. That's third place. I can't read. That's third place. It's 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 third place. They got a runner-up in the FA Cup in 2025. Um, they got a third place in the Prem in 2027. Carabao Cup, they they still haven't won a trophy, Chet. They won the EFL trophy in 2027, so their U21s won a trophy, but we're not counting that. Um, they still have not won a trophy since 2008. It's the same situation as real life, and we are stepping in. We are stepping in to try and change that. We are getting a mammoth contract offer from Tottenham Hotspur, and they have big expectations for us. Say a, say a goodbye to the squad. We, had, you know, we didn't win any trophies with Saint at the end, but we took a club from the second division to Champions League qualification in a two-year span. Obviously, Champ Champions League didn't go the way we wanted, but Vladan Kovacevic, that memorable, incredible goal he scored, um... That Wait, can I cancel that transfer? <laughs> well, hold on just a second here. This is our goalkeeper. I can say our now because we're, we're going to Tottenham. It's Kelleher. Not like he's that much better. That is not a great keeper, actually. Who's the other guy? Oh, Vicario. It should be Vicario, right? Surely it's Guglielmo. Nah, well, let St. Etienne take it. Calvin Ramsey. Dude's been with our team since, uh, since the second division. I wish him the best, you know? Oh, you know, it's a real shame that Rodier's hurt this entire year and we didn't get really we didn't really get to enjoy him Stoyan Alexo I'm sure he's gonna end up being a, a great center back at the end of his career we really started to see that he was the guy for us Ah, Negru you just got here you were fun <laughs> the only guy that was at the club when I got here Still here, still a part of the rotation. He bought into the project. And, you know, what What a guy. Jacques Ecomier. I'll always have a fun spot in my heart for Ecomier. Bravo. Boy, he is a, he's a big guy. Appreciated him. Luis Torres, who scored six goals in a league match at one point. Freaking baller. Fans love him. He's going to have a long, successful career with the Mexican national team. The best player on our team, Jean Martins, who is an incredible pickup for us from Guimaraes. He's been amazing the last two years. He's just a really fun player. Yeah, really fun player. Joel Indala. People were hating on this signing when we made it, but he was so good, especially down this back stretch. One of the guys that could make things happen for us. All speed. Shelter up the outrageous signing we made in the second division. Never quite found his groove with us, but played in so many matches. Schumacher, another guy that we, you know, he just wasn't a lot of development there, and I, I don't really like him. 
But I do like Cabello Mokowena, who's now worth a ton of money and is a very good striker. And he has a very bright career. We've launched the career of a lot of guys. Rual, who we signed when we were in the second division. Him and Mika Fey were that back line for two straight years. Got us all the way up. Montiel, I hate you. Get out of my face. Nico Arnu was a fun signing. God, he wasn't as good as we hoped. <laughs> Lorenzo Sage, who he signed straight out of uh, the Mozambique League with UD Songo, and he ended up being a real good player. And he, I mean, he's worth $100 million, apparently. Uh, that's insane to me that Lorenzo Sage is worth $100 million, and Atletico Madrid is apparently interested in him around that price tag. <laughs> War but you know what? Warren Bondo, baby. This guy was a beast. I might bring this guy to Tottenham with me. This guy can play like so many positions. He plays them well. He does so many good things. I love Bondo. I loved Bondo. Loved Bondo. Obviously, Bengani Kamala feel terrible. He got hurt. Kiarodia, get out of my face. Musa Diara was fine. The captain, the only captain there ever was of my St. Etienne team, led us to promotion, led us to Champions League, Branko van den Bomen. May he end his career with St. Etienne. The longest I've been at a club in this save, but our journey continues. Our journey to the top of the game continues. We bid adieu to this team, and of course, I'd be remiss. I would be remiss if we did not say a heartfelt goodbye to a man that has since broken into the South African national team, Lela Mela Bad Boy, who we have brought to Europe, who is making hay in Europe. A saint of football manager, an elite wonder kid of epic proportions. Saint Bad Boy will remain on the roster at Saint at the end while he plays on loan at Hibernian. I'll be sure to get up to Scotland to watch a match every now and again. And Alain Diallo, this dude was huge in our first two years as well. We really appreciate what he did. Very silky player. And of course, the last guy I feel like we haven't been able to appreciate is Maxime Rodier. Because when we got to this club, when we got to this club, Maxime Rodier was in the reserves. And last year, he was named one of the top five wonder kids in the world. And even though he's been hurt basically all year, this kid's got it. He's got the it factor. He gets the job done. He's a great player, and he's a big part of the future at St. Etienne. Maxime Rodier. <laughs> Give Espar his face as a parting gift. I believe that could be arranged. There he is. We will give Xavi Espar his face as a parting gift. Oh, there it is. Xavi Espar did play pretty well there down the stretch. Um, it is... Madsen, thank you for the five gifted subs, dude. I appreciate the five gifted subs. Erie, thank you so much for the gifted sub. It's getting hot spur in here. Hey, it is. Thank you for continuing your sub. 21 months, brother. And Madsen, thank you. Xavi Espar is there. His face is now in the game. As a thank you for his contributions to the team. Well, chat, that's it. One more continue. And I'm the coach at Tottenham. Thank you to St. Etienne for everything. I'll always remember the club fondly. It was quite the journey. It was ups and downs. It was a coaching battle. It was a coaching battle. And we battled our way up to the highest finish since the 80s for St. Etienne in the top flight.
It's time to lead Tottenham Hotspur to glory. In a move which will spark plenty of heated debate, Zeeland Shannon has left St. Etienne to join Tottenham. Shannon, who of course most famously lifted the Gold Cup of the U.S., will face pressure to bring immediate success to Hotspur Stadium, having stepped up from his previous standing to take sole charge, and will need to hit the ground running if he is to win those who believe his appointment is a questionable decision over. Gerhard Struber is considered to be the favorite, but it is unclear whether the club favored Shannon all along. St. Etienne will now be looking for a new head coach. Meanwhile, a bunch of people have exited the club after my sweeping and comprehensive decisions to change the staff. Tottenham have been disappointing in the Premier League so far this season and find themselves in 11th and have won one of just their five games recently. <sighs> Hello. Yo, who just... Getting hot in here just gifted 10 subs, dude. Thank you for giving 10 people the ad-free experience. Thank you for supporting the stream. We've got a war chest of nearly 70 million to go into this uh, into this window. We'll see what holes we have in the team. Um, I haven't won a trophy since 2008. Time to change that. So we have, I don't even know, a Haroldson. So Kulazevsky, Jonathan David, Yves Basuma, Javi Guerrera. Uh, I do have Rico Lewis, Romero, Ignacio. Uh, Ignacio is a good pickup. Mickey Vandeven and Vicaria. Guys are loaned out. Uh, to various clubs. That's okay. We'll look at the squad more in depth in a second, but we are mid-season, so staff is important. Entertaining, attacking, possession, most to set pieces, high tempo. Be competitive with Arsenal. Forge a higher reputation than Chelsea. All right, it just said the goal was top half. I thought I promised Europa League, but if it's top half, then we're okay with that. Yeah, I'll schedule the press conference. Shannon takes charge of Tottenham. It's just 33 years of old. A 33 years old Zealand Shannon has risen from the second division of South Africa. What is that? Our seventh year as a coach, right? In our seventh year as a coach, I have taken charge at Tottenham Hotspur. We have, yep, we've climbed all the way. Okay. Sweet. <laughs> Playing time expectations, so that looks fun. We'll figure that out later. Time to mute then take preview. Pretty good, all right. Super Spurious, thank you for the 10 gifted subs, dude. I appreciate it. Thank you for supporting the stream and giving 10 people the emotes and the ad-free experience for a whole month. Griffiola, thank you for the prime also. Hello. Sign some Americans. Oh, I'm all over that. I'm all over that. I'm all over that. Yes, we are. We are here. We're managing Spurs. Players currently unhappy. Um, once initially agreed playing time, wants to move for a different challenge, wants to leave for continental soccer. All right. Well, you are not a particularly good player and you're worth a lot of money, Kong and Lee. So I am OK with that. Um, we'll just we'll, we'll approach that right off the top. Leader. Oh, baby. Hello. My name's Zealand. You guys do not think I should have gotten the job. That is very clear. The cohesion's actually great. The atmosphere isn't bad, which is wild. They're just not going to listen to any of my team talks for a little while, but that's okay. So they just got knocked out in the quarterfinal of the EFL Cup, which sucks on pins to Brentford. Um, FA Cup obviously hadn't kicked off. In Europa League league phase, the team's in a great spot with Austria, Vienna, and Bonnik Ostrava to play at the end of January. So we get um, Arsenal away. <laughs> Our first match is Arsenal away. Shut up, dude. The first match is Arsenal away. All right. One thing at a time. First thing, we don't have a coaching staff, and we're in the middle of the season. We're over the payroll budget. So the first thing we're going to do is find an assistant coach. All right, first thing we're going to do, one crisis at a time, boys. One crisis at a time. Joao Sacramento, that dude's an animal. I'd like him to be the assistant coach at my, uh, my, my, my new job here. Please and thank you. 
Oh, this is just looking for a oh, okay. Okay, so next we need a fitness coach. David Lechner. Oh, that dude uh, just retired. But hey, Lechner, you want to be a fitness coach for Tottenham Hotspur? Hell yeah, you do. Of course you do. Why the hell would you not? This is the greatest job in the world. Um... Okay, yeah, now we can go Mark Howard is our other fitness coach. That's what I'm thinking. He's at Watford, so I'm sure he'll be thrilled to get this phone call. Where'd that other guy go? We offered that out, right? Lechner, fitness coach, fitness coach, yes. Goalkeeping coach. Please and thank you, goalkeeping. Somebody that's good at everything would be great. Oh, no shot. No shot, dude. Uncanny, thank you for the four months. Appreciate you supporting the stream. Okay. Uh, Tony Toplovich. That dude's a ridiculous goalkeeping coach. We're going to up his wage a little bit. So see if we can make sure that he accepts that deal. Okay, now we need an actual coaching staff, which is important. Uh, determination, discipline, motivating, 13. And then we'll start with whatever we can find. So defending. Defending technical and defending tactical. We've got Jose Melendez. Very good coach. This dude is coaching in Mexico, so he has no idea how good he is yet. Stefano. Uh, Mile Yedinak. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, Mile Yedinak. Get in here. So with the, right, so we, now we want to attacking. Let's see, we've got attacking technical right here. Turu Flores looking like a really good attacking technical coach. We love to see that. Lazar Popovich, do we have a little attacking tactical? We have that with Marco Valadez. Okay, you are not going to be an assistant coach though. Hope you're cool with that, but if I pay you, like, Premier League coach wages, are you cool? Be so cool, Marcos. Be so cool. Okay, i got to remember I'm not changing that. So mental. Wow, there's some mental monsters here. Uh, Warren Joyce is a good tactical coach. Oh, Warren, you want to take the step up? Hell yeah, you do. And then technical coach Frederick. Oh, wait! Did I hire this guy? I did. I hired him at Knock Breda back in the day. No, I want you to be a senior coach. Allow me to blow your mind, Frederick Eliasson, but I totally hired that guy back in the day, and we are totally bringing him from Knock Breda to Tottenham. Hell yeah. Okay, so that handles our coaching staff. I think we'll have one spot left, but we'll figure out what we want to use that for later. We need a head of youth development as well. Kind of important, considering we just got rid of ours mid-season. So, uh, remind me what the game considers important. Um, uh, surely there's no twenties. He says, hopefully. Okay, okay, okay. Chill, Roberto. Chill. That guy's real, and he has a determined personality. But this guy is a professional personality. Look, I know it's going to... Uh-oh. Oh, the reputation, it's not even close. Reputation's an important part of it. It's not even close. It's this guy all the way. Roberto Samadin. Come on, Roberto. I don't care if he's 63. He can speak to the youngsters. The Pope? He is Italian. Performance analyst. There we go. That's what we needed. Thank you. Okay, well, they're all hiding at this level. Michelle. Uh, 
Uh oh. We have five spots for this for performance analysts, so. Wait, 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 wait. Do we have recruitment analyst spots too? Where's Constantinellius? We got to figure out if we want him yet. So recruitment analysts, it's about... God, so judging player ability, this is tactical knowledge. So people that have really high tactical knowledge, they all just have 16. Are you serial right now? Like, are you so serial? Uh, ooh, peop, uh, that dude, Michael Edwards, has very good tactical knowledge. Um, hello, Michael. You are worth a boatload of money. I hate you. All right, tactical knowledge, analyzing data at 20, Kim Hotke. These dudes aren't going to take this offer. I, I can smell it. I can see it in their eyes. I know what they're all about. These guys, they're never, never going to take this offer. It's ridiculous. I can see it. Igor Quia. So we need five performance. 1.6 million. $1.6 million is compensation. That is so insane. For a freaking performance analyst. Like, I could just go get this guy $60,000 compensation. Two more. We need two more. One more. Dude wants an outrageous amount of money, but I'm willing to give it to him. We're in the Premier League. I can give him whatever I want. Oh, we're grooving. Uh, yup. <laughs> just grooving. We're just grooving. Uh, general manager, right? Time to get the acquisition staff in place. Why does Spurs have no staff? We got rid of all of them. We got rid of like literally all of them. Yeah, we got rid of all the staff. That's why there's no staff. They, they didn't have, like, just a massive lack of staff. We fired a lot of guys. I was the Grim Reaper. I showed up. We just fired everybody. It was awesome.
Oh, David Trezeguet. That's a very good scout that we could sign. I have 14 spots open. So you guys are about to see a pretty spectacular performance here, trying to put together one of the greatest scouting departments you've ever seen. Because I have 14 spots open right now. 14! Thank you, Autumn Beanie, for the two months. Thanks for supporting the stream. Vladimir, my goodness, 47 months. Thank you so much for that. Joseph Dawson, thank you for the four months. Uncanny Tina, thank you for the four months. Thank you guys for supporting the stream. Enjoy your lack of ads. We're just vibing our new job with Tottenham Hotspur, but of course we sacked like the entire coaching staff, so we have to... Uh... Okay, screw you, dude. You... Get out of here. All, all these guys that are chief scouts... Are... He's not even the chief scout. His preferred job isn't chief scout. Last time I checked, William Santos. Wouldn't suck to have a Brazilian scout with good knowledge, so that's five. We need 14, which means we need nine more. Nine more, my good man. Nine more. Sir Caro Ruby's Benden. Great knowledge. Dude's only 70. He's in the prime prime of life. Seven. Didn't Team On already uh, get mad at me? Yes. Clemens Hartenbach. The two adaptability is really scary. Mario Vossen. Well, that's the other one I hate. Okay. Johannes Jans. Now, you're a chief scout, so he's like, well, I can't not be in charge. Luciano Canepa. Yes, Luciano Canepa. So we've six left. Jean-Claude Abidou. Look at that knowledge. Look at the freaking knowledge that guy has. Five left. Dustin Hewn. That's okay. He's not great. Five spots left, dude. Five spots left. Gianmarco Specchia. I think we might be able to convince you to take this job if we threw the right amount of money on the table. And we did. Gabby Ruiz. Yes. Uh, once again, we are going to try and up the amount of money that we are allowed to spend here. To get you to say yes, but you didn't. Mario Vossen. That's the guy that hates me. Team on Pauls hates me. Pablo Longoria. Okay. One, two. So I think we have three left. <laughs> Sounds right to me. We have three scout spots left. We have two spout spots left. Sebastian Ahrens. Yeah, I don't know if we'd want Ahrens on our team. It sounds like he'd have a very full to-do list outside of scouting. More of like a honey-do list, you know? Seems tough. The joke was that bad. If you're sitting there and you're like, "Did was that? Yep. Yep. 100%. There was a joke, 100%. Because he's running errands. <laughs> Wow, nine people? Hello. Francisco Lopez. You know, I've I've done a lot of reading about sports science stuff, and I really think you'd be you'd be a great fit for us. Your your peer your your peer reviewed stuff is fantastic. Um all right, and three of these other guys that might want to be a sports scientist at this wonderful club that we call home. Xavi Reche. Was it three? Yeah. Um, hmm. Jack Naylor. Elliot Woolmer, you are at Birmingham City. I have no idea how you've been able to hide out in that spot for so long. 
And another Englishman, Callum Higney. So we're good there. And now we just need physios, which should be the easiest thing ever. Because you can get 20 physios anywhere. So we're just looking for 20 physios that also have uh, a stupid high current compensation. So how about we don't do that? Under 18's physio. No, I'm looking senior team, brother. He's like, hey, and can you make that contract longer? I didn't expect that. Yep, sure. Physiotherapy staff, that's two. Sven and Lisa and Susanna. Oh, from St. Etienne. Oh, what's up? How you doing? So one of the St. Etienne people did make it. Susanna Pluya. James Haycock. Damien Blanc. Okay, and then we've got this dude, Nacho Fornas. Compensation's a little high, but he's fine. Would you look at that, chat? We have hired our entire coaching, well, not the entire coaching staff. Our set piece coach is still in place. All right, squad, who's on the team? Star players are Dejan Kulazewski. Obviously a really, really, really good player. Uh -huh. Other stars, Rico Lewis. Yeah, I think we can uh, we can do some great things with him there. And Bellarmino Seca. This guy's a regen. Yeah. How are you in an 11th with this dude running around? Are you kidding me? Bellarmino Seca is a beast. He is an unstoppable tidal wave of awesomeness. Tries killer balls off and plays one twos with his brilliant passing and off ball movement. He is a menace at the number 10. Clear menace at 10. Or we could play him center mid on attack and he can make something happen from there like a 4 3 3. Yes. Javi Guerra. Well, that's a really well-rounded midfielder. He's got some defense to offer. Very well-rounded. Spanish national team, uber regular right now. Yasin Ujkan. So our center backs might be a bit of an issue. Although this dude does have 19 jumping rage, so. Gonzalo Inacio is normally a fantastic center back, and he is once again a fantastic ball-playing center back in the Portuguese national team in the prime of his career. So he has teams a little bit better um, than the one we were at. Uh, Lee Kong-in. Uh, Lee Kong-in, he wants to leave. He has a slight concern. He wants to leave to play in the Champions League. I... Unlike, apparently, the uh, people that were here, your are in and in and on. I'm okay with that. Haroldson, Hakan Haroldson. You know, here's my issue. I don't see a lot of wingers on this team. This dude is another, like, number 10, middle of the park, creative player that doesn't have the pace. Where's the speed? Well, Mickey Vandeven's fast, but... Like, in the regular starter realm, I'm not seeing the pace. Even Kong, uh, Lee Kong-in, I'm not seeing it. That's what we need. We need guys that could take the lid off. Is Eve still good? Oh, yeah, he is. Eve's is still very good. Uh, our midfield is nuts. Uh, Christian Romero, so he starts for the other guy. He starts with Anasio. Yasin Ujkan should not be a regular starter. Well, I don't think I have the cachet to tell him that. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> Whatever. Um, Mickey Vandenven. Uh, Vandenven. Yep, there's the pace. That's good left back, honestly. 
I don't hate him at left back at all. This team is really, really not lacking for talent. Although this Jonathan David being in the starting lineup should not be the case. Um, if he's not willing to take a reduction in playing time, he's somebody I, okay, he is. He is willing to take a reduction in playing time, which he's going to get. So see ya. Not just hating on Canada here. Uh, Mikey Moore. Uh, Michael Coyote. Oh, that's a very good second right back as well. That's fun. That's a lot of fun. Santiago Jimenez. Who's the striker? Holy hell, dude. We need a striker. This dude's like, this dude would have been at home on my freaking St. Etienne team. We need a Premier League striker. God, you're paying him $17 million. No wonder you're in a terrible spot. You're paying that guy $17 million? Holy hell. That's got to be one of the biggest wages on the team. Good Lord. Uh, matters the running his contract out at the end of the year, but he's not really going to be in the team that much. Uh, he's eating up a ton of wage, too. He only just signed, dude. Who, yeah, dang it, Z Zinedine. Zidane, dude, what the hell? I guess we're just eating that wage. Um, are interested teams? Oh, please. Please. We have such a good midfield. We don't need Pape Matar Sar, but he might be one of the homegrown guys. Is it else in this first team? Um, Quentin Timber. I believe that is Kesha's brother. He's uh, transfer listed by request. Okay. You said you're transfer listed by request. You can't come back to me and be like, oh. Uh, Madison, David, we've already looked at. Bentacore wants to move on for a new challenge. I love his mentality. Really, really love his mentality, but I'm also okay with that on a an ability level. I think we, again, our midfield is stacked outrageously. Very interested in speaking to other clubs. Well, let's see if anybody wants you. I, I don't know. Yeah, everybody here is getting paid so much dang money. I don't know if anybody's actually going to want you. That dude's a perfectly competent backup, Vushkovich. Franco Mastantuono. Is um, they, I mean, why did we sign that other striker? You could just roll out Franco Maston Tuono and be fine. And the rest of these guys are unregistered and sent out. Isaac Babati is listed. I'm okay with that. Uh, we'll we'll stick an offer out, see what kind of deals we can get. Um, and Callum Olusesi, how the hell is this guy on the team? He better be club grown. If he's not, it's a nightmare. Yeah, he's 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 club grown. All right, so registration is jam-packed. Mastin Tuono is just not registered because they just don't have the room. All right, so I'm looking to move Lee Kong in, Rodrigo Mentecor, the and the other guy as well. So Lee Kong in, we are looking to move him. Um, okay, tactic. We don't have a striker and we don't have wingers. Anybody have a tactic that doesn't use either of those? I got to go to the bathroom. You guys figure that out.
The 4150. All right, Romero and Mickey Vandeven. Eves Basuma. You'll see it take shape. I have an idea. Okay. Rico's out there. We got Rico. Um... Bellarmino Seco. All right, Inacio, that rounds out our defense. Old Googly Elmo, you're in. <sighs> okay, we can go like Kulisevsky out there. Okay, I'm feeling it now. I'm starting to feel it. I have no idea who the hell I'm going to play at striker, though. Freaking Mastatuano is not even registered. Hakon Haroldson. No, no, you know, you, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have had a couple of ideas going through my head. We're just, we're feeling this out right now. Give it a second.
Well, how many days do we have? One. So Bentacore is playing. <laughs> Uh, Pape Matosar, Jonathan David, Santi Jimenez. Where is China? Okay. All right, Gary, you're making uh, you're making runs. <laughs> Gary, you're making the runs. Thank you very much. Um, he's got more goals in him than Hakan Haraldson has. Well, this Essie sucks. I no offense to him wherever he happens to be, but he is not good. Uh, Mikey Moore, you're in. Um, All right. So that's insane, obviously. This is a batshit, just insane tactic, right? But, 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 it might just work. It might just work. Right, because we don't have guys that are at the level that we need them to be at at all positions. We have a couple of really good players, but we don't have all of them. This is off-the-wall nonsense that might just work. So that's tactic number one. I'm also going to run a more basic, more high, like higher level 4231. That was the other thing we were thinking about. We're going to start the Tottenham match in that other tactic. Suck is the advanced playmaker. I haven't used an advanced playmaker on attack in a long time. Cannot wait, dude. And Hakan Haraldson can step out here. He plays right-footed. Uh, yeah, you can use both, so you can do whatever we want him to do. Um, I would like for him to... He's not a real crosser, so I'd like for him to... Because he can't, tr he can't trek Wartista. We'll call that the spaceship, for lack of a better term. Um... We'll have Haroldson throw himself forward. Um, this tactic, we're going to have both of our fullbacks on support. They can advance if they want to. This is definitely the way we should set up our center backs, though. And then Gera's going to be the Metsala on support who arrives at random times. And then we are going to have to, regrettably, at least initially, start like Jonathan David and play just like a classic advance forward. So I like him more than Santiago Jimenez as well, because I mainly just really don't like Santiago Jimenez. Okay, we don't not have a great left back sub. This is a weirdly built team. Um, why why we've loaned out Josh Doeg when that guy's a perfectly acceptable left back sub? I don't know. Uh, yeah, this is a this is our high pressure, high octane, get in your kitchen type tactic. Uh, we will play out from the back because I think we have a really good setup for playing out from the back and I love our midfielders so we've got that we've got this and then we're going to create a third tactic which is well you're, you're, you've seen this before if you've watched the stream you've seen what I'm about to do before
Bring it back, baby. Play the classics. What are we rioting for? Czech youth? Ah, yes, okay. No, I just love that this guy has two caps for Argentina and he's just not um, up in the first team. That's power move right there. How about the striker? Be surprisingly good. He's not even going on an intensive language course. The poor guy doesn't even speak English. Help him. All right. Good people riot by the chat there. We needed to look. We needed to look. So how many of those guys are unavailable? Anybody that's unavailable? Master Tuano's unavailable. Uh, no, they're all good. They're all cleared. So where's that striker? Audern? Santiago, look at me. Look me dead in the eyes, Santiago. Yeah, I know you just got here. I'm just saying. People riot, we have nothing to riot about. That's fair. Uh, you don't. <coughs> Callum Olosesi should be playing with the U21s. I don't see him getting anywhere near the team. These other guys, at least they have a chance, right? Um, they have a chance to get around and help the team a little bit. Um, Eberin's Gamara is... Okay, he's not that good, but he's definitely somebody that can play in a cup match and spell us. Um, Nicholas Aldrin. So if we let's go to the tactic we're going to play in our first match, which is this. Um, which is where we get Rodrigo Bentoncourt, try and get our experience on the field. Come out here playing an absolutely crazy move. All right, now we got to set up our set pieces. All right, Sam, Harry, cook me something. Do some chefing. Far post in swinger, and I would like to create a short in swinger that runs less average, and I'd like to create it that way. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Log room atmosphere going up. Oh, leadership support going up. Oh, we like this. Hold a team meeting. Uh, hi, how you guys doing? Uh, cool. I'd like to talk about our aims for the Europa League. I think we can end up winning the whole competition. Everybody's cool with that. Cool. I'm kind of confused about our Premier League goals, so I've got nothing else for you for right now, but hopefully that ups our leadership support. Oh, look at the atmosphere, baby. Let's go. Getting that new coach boost right out here. Captain. 
Uh, if you wish to remove Lewis from the role, Rico Lewis is the current captain. That tracks. Madison's the current vice captain. What's wrong with Vandeman? Romero, Kulisevsky, or Guerra would also be nice. Uh, Kulisevsky or Guerra. I'm going to warn Madison. Let's see if this works. I think you have more suitable candidates. I think you're probably right. All right, so we're going to make it Christian Romero because he's going to – well, him and uh, – he's older than Javi Guerra. We'll just make it Christian Romero. Rico Lewis stays club captain. Romero is part of the highest echelon of our locker room, so we're going to make sure that he's there as well. Season expectations. Oh, okay, so it is qualified for the Europa League. Got it. Yeah, I understand what they are. Okay, hi. Hi, media. How are you doing? How do I feel? Sad here as the new Tottenham head coach. It's a real honor, honestly. Do you feel the expectations asked of you have been fair and realistic? Um, yeah, I'm very happy with the direction we're going. The direction we're anticipating going. Many people think that Tottenham's payroll budget is simply too small for you to bring in the high-quality players needed. I, I disagree with that. I fully disagree with that. Um, I've been given a budget. I'm happy to work within it. Some players suggest you may be looking to sign U.S. players for Tottenham. I mean, Gio Reyna would help the team, but out, him and Pulisic, outside of that, I don't think anybody would help. Uh, I'm not talking about that. I'm leaving your previous job. You disappointed a number of St. end supporters. Um... Yeah, I understand why they felt that way, but I'll, uh, yeah, yeah, I had to apologize to them, but hopefully they will understand my reasons for moving on. Yes. Over your career, become well-known for my distinctive brand of football. Um, every group brings a different set of strengths and weaknesses for a head coach, so I'm, I'm just trying to get wins from this team. Do you think that my commitments will limit my ability to do this job with the U.S.? Uh, no. I wouldn't have agreed to this job unless I thought I could do it. First match in charge is one against Arsenal. <laughs> The North London Derby away, first match. How well are you prepared for this sort of test? Um, couldn't hope for a better way to get started. A win against them gets us going in the right direction immediately if we can pull it off. Delighted with the facilities. A great opportunity to expand my career, managing in England as well. Um, I speak the language, which is nice. I don't have to learn the Soweto language or anything this time. Imperative to cultivate a strong locker room atmosphere. Very little time to prepare for the first fixture. Uh, what impact does that have on performance? Uh, I've inherited a professional bunch of players. We know uh, they're expected to meet a certain standard. What about be targeting the FA Cup? Will I be targeting the FA Cup? Uh, we, wanna, uh, we want winning to be ingrained in their culture. So if there's something to be won, we want to win it. It's a big step up. Are you nervous about taking on this role? Um... I have confidence in my ability to coach at this level. They parted with Zinedine and Zidane because expectations weren't being met. Do you have confidence you can bring results up to scratch? Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting stuck in. I Yes, I get this is the longest press conference of all time, dear Lord. Well, where did it go wrong for Zinedine and Zidane? I don't want to disrespect him in his time here. Um, I'm not here to talk about things I wasn't involved in. I'm not disrespecting Zinedine and Zidane, okay? <laughs> Um, it was clear from the outset this team could improve, and I have a good idea of how we can go about that. Do you think their next three matches are a good chance of getting off to a good start? They're points to be had. We got to fight for all of them. Uh, will you go back to your old club to bring some of your former colleagues in? I'm bringing one of them. Um, but that just depends on the need and the level and what we can afford. Have you had a chance to meet with the players? Yes. Club's ready to hit a reset and gets chance. everybody gets a chance to impress. So, you know, we're looking at a new setup and we'll see what happens. What approach will I be taking to training? Um, I want a smart staff to know how to approach every day in an exciting and interesting way. What attracted me to Tottenham? The trophies. Um, it's a huge club. They're paying me a boatload of money and we just have to succeed while we're here, dude. Uh, how much work do you think will need to be done to bring the squad up to standard? Um, my approach based on trust, I trust them to perform well. Um, we have very talented players. I think we could use a few more. <laughs> Are the Tottenham fans important to your long-term plans? Yeah, of course. Obviously. Where do you think you can take this club? Uh, we want to be the best team in the world. 
I mean, that's that's where we got to be aiming for. We have the resources to do that. And Bellarmino Sek is a terrific player. I know he's only 21, but he's a terrific player. It's widely expected that Kulazevsky will leave the club. Can you hold on to him? Do you want him? I hope he stays. Uh, we need to have those conversations. It's something I want to get into as soon as possible. <coughs> Are we going to focus on the Premier League? We want to do well in the league, of course. That's a given. All right, awesome. We've handled the outrageous media here as well. Let's see if I can hire a staff. We are continuing. Oh, and Arsenal's in first, bro. This is going to be a tough match. Okay. Oh, it is going to be a tough match. They are in first place. Zero Phobus, thank you so much for the prime, dude. Thank you for supporting the stream. And enjoy your ad-free experience. So we had a few offers, except that we got to wait for work permits to get approved. Um, Saint Etienne did complete the signing of Daniel Lesur. Okay. Do, 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 do. Where would you go? Where would you go? All right, I've been at the job for a day. Let's see what we got. Perhaps the coach of Arsenal. Plot twist. Mikel Arteta le left to go to Bayern and Pep less left Dortmund to go to Arsenal. That happened in the offseason. Yeah, dude. I just say our net debt was a billion dollars because of the new stadium. That is so insanely high. Sick. Uh, all right. Away against Arsenal, chat. It's very easy. I don't know what the issue is. Don't know why they were... Uh, don't know why they were struggling. This is a, this is a cakewalk. This is a freaking cakewalk, dude. Freaking cakewalk. All right, we're going to continue to pound that, um, that sort of training there. Now we're also going to make sure that we get that defending engaged or whatever we had in that spot as well. Okay. Feeling good. Feeling good. We got some crazy match schedules coming at us, but that is all part of the process. And I, I'm trusting, I'm trusting that process. I don't even have a staff. There's like no coaching staff on the bench for this, dude. We do not even have a staff. All right, Vicario, Lewis, Romero, Inacio, Vandeven, Basuma, Haroldson, Bentoncourt, Javi Guerra, Seca, Kulazevsky.
All right, we actually have a left back that can mark Bakayo Saka, so I'm going to do that, and Van de Ven will take care of it. Right, Mickey, you got it? Hell yeah, Mickey. <laughs> First match, okay. First match of Tottenham. First match in charge of Tottenham away against Arsenal. Can we get off to the absolute dream start with a win here? I've selected my first team. Revenge. 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 You guys have this. Yeah, you're right. We do need some fighting music. What can I cook up here? Need like a... Uh, like a... Uh, little Eye of the Tiger. Yeah, Romero! There you go! Get nasty in there! Get physical! Hit these dudes! Hit these dudes! Smack him. What is Haroldson doing? The American in charge of Tottenham taking over for Zinedine Zidane on the road at league leading Arsenal. Haroldson has a yellow. This isn't bad, though. This is not bad. Longer we get into this match, the more belief will be there. There's not a single shot in this match. This is how you manage right here. Shoot it. Okay, thank you. You Spurs? Yes. 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 Taking over a team in 11th on the road against the best team in the league. Hell yeah, we take that. Come on, boys. We get that one counter opportunity. Playing keep away with all those midfielders we've got out there. Uh, we're going to need him to miss this shot. Oh, we didn't shoot it. Let's keep all day. Easy. Let's keep easy. Easy. Googly Elmo. Easy. All up here, boys. It's all up there. No, get that out. Nice. Romero on the breakaway. Good show, Hakan Haroldson. Good show. All right, Basuma. Kulazevsky, nice touch. Good pass. This is where we can make something happen. Rico with momentum. Oh, my no! Oh, it was blocked. Who got it? Zabarni. Dang it. Oh, it was Javi Guerra. Oh. Anasio. Saka. Oh, he should have shot it. That was offside. Bring that down and give it a smack, Saka. Ah, Eves. Way to go. Come on. Keep fighting. No, Googly Elmo, dear God. 
He contested it, so the guy missed the header, but holy smokes, my heart. Sub! Sub! I know I said I didn't like him, but Santiago Jimenez might actually be able to play in this tactic. I love how aggressive our back line is looking. That makes me so happy. Um, give me Papa Montar Sar uh, for Hakan Haraldson. Okay. Santi? I'm not an unfair manager. I think you might actually be able to do something in this tactic. Please prove me right. Mickey Vandeven just got hurt. That is, you better be able to fight through that, dude. You're the only thing standing between me and Bakayo Saka. Well, let's go wall. Let's go wall. Wall, man of the match. All right, 10 minutes left. Hey, 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 look at me, look at me, look at me. Eyes, eyes, eyes. All right, eyes on me. Come on, focus. Kolozewski's going deep. Mikey. Mikey, come on. Vandevin. Kyote. You got to get Mickey. He's freaking wheezing. Oh, my. Come on. Come on. Well, uh, of course, it's an end-of-match highlight. We all know that. It's the end-of-match highlight. Shape! Shape! Come on! Arsenal, come on! I thought you guys were leading the league! What is this? I thought you guys were the big bad leaders of the league! What was that? I would walk around the entire stadium talking trash after that. We just played the most anti-game of all time to get a nil-nil. That's what I'm talking about. I had a day. We had a day. We had a day to set that up, and we shut them down. Hell yeah, boys. Hell yeah, boys. We shut them down. The team that wouldn't even give me an interview. They wouldn't even give me an interview. They hired Pep Guardiola instead. Draw is a fair result today. <laughs> I'm going to delegate this for the future, but, you know, first match in charge, I think we should do it. <laughs> Nothing to be proud of? I think there's a lot to be proud of. I think that's a point gained. We're a team in transition. We're a team that's not as talented as Arsenal. We're a team that had a day to prepare a new tactic against Arsenal on the road. I am very proud of our team. 
And I don't want my team listening to any of that nonsense that you're spewing out there right now. I want my team listening to me. I want my team listening to me, dude. I want them listening to me about how great that was. As a Tottenham devotee, Mikey Moore is no stranger to the rivalry with Arsenal. It's definitely the extra incentive, you know, and I thought it was good to get him out there, obviously. Uh, this is the last time we're doing a press conference, but, you know, first match and everything. Googly elbow for Car Dude, that save there at the end, that was huge. Um, he was the man of the match. Yeah, that, that, that works for me. I mean, he didn't have a lot of saves to make, but he had a big save to make, and he made it. Christophe Galtier was spotted uh, watching Googly Elmo Vicario. Hope he didn't say anything more heinous. Um... How do you know he wasn't here just enjoying all that? Uh, Con Lee, Lee Kong In was unsettled and was left out of the team. Not making any defense definitive state uh, statements now. I have to play him in the future without him at the club. That might change, but for now, I need to do right by the club. What's the thinking behind the approach? I wanted to give us their best chance, <laughs> and we gave ourselves the best chance. We played, we played some anti ball, dude, but it worked. We played some anti ball, but it worked. We went on the road, we went into the lion's den, and we came out with even points, so. All right, we've, uh, we passed that off the press conference, but what a sensational result, chat. And that is what we're going to send ourselves into the weekend on. We drew Arsenal, baby! Yeah! Yeah! Oh, I am so ready to house the league. I passed it on to my set piece coach because I don't have anybody else in my coaching staff right now. We're, we're working on changing that. But thank you guys so much today. I had a great time. Obviously, we did not expect that we would end up at freaking Tottenham. Did not think we would get the job. It's a massive job with a massive wage and massive transfer budget and everything. But we're there. The vibes have been excellent. Love you guys. Fist bump. Uh, we're going to raid somebody, so stick around for that. Thank you to everybody that subscribed, that gifted subs today. Uh, that That's what allows us to have so many channels and make so many videos and do the streams. And uh, hopefully you guys do, do more stuff that hopefully you guys enjoy, and I really appreciate it. Um, oh, wow. This is, it's amazing. Journeyman's so fun because we started the day battling with St. Etienne and we ended it drawing away with our Spurs against Arsenal. It is crazy how things change. We've been given a massive opportunity. We got to take advantage of it. But we're going to have a, um, we are get, we're, we're going to have a pretty wild January transfer window. We're going to try and move some guys. We're going to try and get some guys in. We're going to try and build a system that isn't anti-football, obviously, because, you know, that tactic won't work against Brentford. Uh, it'll work away against Arsenal if we needed to. Just shut the game down. Um, oh, that was tough. All right, we're finding who we're going to raid. What a result, though. That's the type of result that right after coming into a club, you get a result like that. You can get the fans. You can get the players. You can get everybody behind you. With that type of result. Something good. Alright, sorry, I gotta I'm not doing a good job of looking around. All right, I got the raid set. You guys ready? You got the copy pasta ready? What you got? Wow, JLab literally sent me the face for every single person that we didn't have a face for already. Thank you so much. I will make sure to get those in. Have a great weekend, everybody. Enjoy the raid. I will see you guys on Monday. Bye.
Word of the day is opprobrium. Opprobrium. O p p r u r o. Sorry. O p p r o b r i u m. Opprobrium. Opprobrium refers to very strong disapproval or criticism of a person or thing, especially by a large number of people. They're going ahead with the plan despite public opprobrium. Ooh. You always want to avoid that public opprobrium. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>